clicking it live with the squeaky flow. I'll knock you down like a domino. Hey, tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here. It's your friendly neighborhood, well, not so friendly neighborhood, apostate. He keeps not getting meaner and meaner by the year. Yes. Look at that. Look at that steely gaze. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Uh, hey guys. So yeah, we uh, uh, I was already live with uh, Avery God Logic earlier. We were going through his discussion with Ali Dawa. AP, did you uh, did you see Avery's interaction with Ali Dawa and two other Dawa guys? Brother, ask a very good question. He says, uh, "No, I didn't see it actually." Uh, uh, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect from God logic going, rolling up into, uh, open, open call in time with Ali Dawa and I some friends. I need to check that out. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Um, pretty so good. already was live earlier. We wanted to, we're not going to be going live too long right now. I, I we're just here to give an update on Bishop Mar and Mari Emmanuel, Mar Mari Emmanuel. Uh, he posted a message. The church also posted a message um, because there have been some people going around claiming, ah, the church is calling for a rally about this. The church is calling for this. And it's actually not the church at all. Uh, and they're saying that we're not doing this. So we need at least some people, hopefully some of you here who are uh, actually paying attention to what the church is posting on YouTube and what they're posting on their website. And basically, someone needs to be in the habit of when you see something posted, hey, the church is calling for this, or Mar Mar Emmanuel is, is, is calling for this, that it's actually coming from their sites, coming from their sites. So when you see something, go check their website. They post uh, they post all their stuff on, uh, on their website and their YouTube channel. So anyway, we're going to go through the announcement, and we're going to go through the uh, – it's just an audio message. He's still recovering. So notice, I mean – Someone did do uh, some kind of damage to him. It wasn't clear what damage was done because the knife didn't. Uh, knife knife was messed up, but uh, he survived and he's recovering. Well, he he did get in the in, hit in the face um, and in such a harsh way that you can even hear it. Mm -hmm. you, you can hear you can hear the um, the punch to his face. The blunt uh, hit to his face with the with with the knife that didn't work. Gladly, so uh, I'm sure he has some um, some injuries from that. And the 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 guy, the crazy the the terrorist, he actually, I mean, hit him multiple times on his face and wherever he did. So I'm I'm, I'm sure that um, also given his old age, sure there is. I'm sure there is, you know, something to recover from here. Yeah, he's only like five or six years older than me. Who, the I, bishop? Yeah. What, really? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Because I feel like even Wait like... Wait a five, minute, really? I, he's only 53 years old? What the heck? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's five years older than me. Isn't that crazy? That's weird. He looks very old. <laughs> Okay. Probably just because of that. It's, it's, it's the crazy, it's the crazy beer. Cause I'm, cause I'm thinking, you know, five years from now, yeah, I'll be older. I'll be weaker and stuff, but I still feel like I can take a, like any, any 16 year old. So anyway, yeah. maybe he's always been a, a lover, not a fighter. I don't know. Yes. Um, although, although I have to say, given the fact that this guy was coming up to kill him, it's pretty impressive that he's, he just got out of there with a, uh, you know, some, some minor injuries. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool stuff. Anyway, anyway, guys, uh, keep everyone keep the big picture in your mind. Why we want to stay, want everyone to stay updated on all this stuff. It's not just because it's a trending topic. There are very important, very important matters at work here. When one of these young guys, uh, uh, assuming that the story doesn't change somehow massively, but based on the information we have, it looks like this is an attack over Ma over the uh, uh, Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel criticizing Muhammad. Um, the purpose of an attack like this, the purpose of an attack like that is to silence the person, make him more reluctant is, I mean, the, you, you can, if you can, if you are successful in killing him, then you've, you've, uh, kept him from, um, criticizing Muhammad anymore. 
But uh, even if he survives, you want him to be more reluctant to criticize Muhammad. And you're trying to send a message to all other people in the world and all future generations. If you criticize Muhammad, something like this will happen to you. Therefore, keep your mouth shut about Muhammad. That's their goal. We have, the rever we have a reverse goal in situations like this. Namely, if you are trying to silence a critic of Muhammad, through violence. We want it to massively backfire in your face. We want that person's voice to be amplified. We want other people to be encouraged to criticize Muhammad even more. You want the whole thing to backfire because, I mean, keep in mind, they want our mindset to be, hey, I, you know, I really don't like a Muhammad and a nine-year-old girl thing. Let me criticize. Oh, no, that, that could get you killed. That could get you killed right there. Okay, yeah, I won't do that. That's the mindset they want us to have. What mindset do we want them to have? We want them to have the mindset of, oh, this guy's criticizing Muhammad. I'm going to go get him. Oh, wait a minute. Whenever we do that, it backfires and this guy's just get more popular. It just backfired on you. It just backfired on you. Oh, we should put that together with some of, <laughs> some of the clips. Because guys, think of, if, if Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel turns out to be fine, what were they enraged about? They were enraged because he got really popular on TikTok and because he ended up going on the PBD podcast and then exposing Muhammad, right? That's a, that's a huge platform. So yeah. they were enraged at that. Guess what? If he's, if he, if he's fine after this, would it be at all surprising if we see him on everyone's podcast? If we see him on Joe Rogan, we see him on with Jordan Peterson. We just see this guy everywhere right now. I, um, I bet he will go right back. He will go soon to PBD podcast. And this time, his appearance this time will be significantly bigger, which will attract much more attention. Whereafter, he will go on different podcasts. And it, 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 this whole terrorist attack against him just amplified the man significantly now he's going to have a much bigger impact and and here's the thing uh when you say what the purpose is behind such an attack th there is one thing that needs to be said muslims are not very smart about uh, about how to approach such an issue not very sophisticated uh probably has to do with the fact that the, that the whole religion is not very smart and very sophisticated and it doesn't really teach much in terms of logic and, uh, and, and the best approach and all that um it is very much built on sand uh see i'm using biblical references now anyway uh but uh you can, you, you can go ahead you can use all the biblical references you want, <laughs> but um so the, the somebody who attacks a bishop after he perceives an insult toward his own religion or his prophet what he is trying to do is not uh, is not oh, okay i am going to attack this man and i will silence him thereby preventing him from further casting doubts no this guy just thinks oh, i'm angry i'm angry i'm angry i'm angry i want to go stab this man so my prophet can be proud of me maybe this will make allah happy and i will go to heaven that's all there is it's not very sophisticated it's stupid it's ridiculously stupid and it's going to backfire it just backfired on you. Just backfired on you. We have no yeah. doubt, and we're proud of that. So yeah, I agree. We want this to backfire, backfire massively. Brianna here says uh, the attacker just. <laughs> That's funny. That's that old line from a uh, uh, super hot fire. He used to say, "I'm about to end this man's whole career." But uh, <laughs> Brianna says this attacker just accelerated this man's whole career. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you, can, uh, you clearly see that the hawk and the hikma was on the side of the bishop and Allah yeah, the protected and the him. Hak, yeah. the Hak and the Hikmah. The Hak and the And he speaks yeah. fluent Arabic, so he knows exactly yeah. what he's got yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sneakster said, see if you guys can get him on. Um, I mean, we would obviously be happy to have him on, but if, if, sir, on, a, on a serious note, he may want to avoid... The people like us who are uh, who yeah. are more insulting than he is, because if you notice, I mean, he's he's hammering home serious, serious points, um, problems with the Quran and so on, Pro especially problems with the Islamic view of Jesus. I mean, he is like systematically exposing these difficulties and training a generation of young Assyrians to do the same thing. That's one of the reasons they have such a, a big problem with them. So um he might not want to associate with the with the uh, the the more uh, 
I wouldn't even want to, honestly. Uh, I would like to personally approach him from a humble position without him knowing who I am and then ask him about things. But I, I wouldn't even want to give the public impression that he is kind of that he's in collaboration with mm -hmm. me or anything that. Uh, yeah. No. Yep. 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 So anyway, we'll see what we'll see what happens, guys. But uh, yeah, want him definitely to recover and continue exposing Islam, and to have an even more, more powerful voice than ever. And that would be pretty, pretty awesome. All right, it let's go ahead and just backfire. It's going to backfire. It was the perfect backfire. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and watch the uh, message from the church again. If you're if you're uh, if you're if you're just tuning in, some people have been claiming that the church or Bishop Mar Mari Emanuel is calling for things, and the church is saying, guys, that has nothing to do with us. Everything that's official from us is coming from uh, from our website and our updates. So we're going to go ahead and watch that. And there is the message from Bishop Mar Mari himself. It's audio only, but we're going to go ahead and listen to it because he has a message for the attacker. And it's interesting, he says he has a message for the attacker and for whoever sent the attacker. So he seems to be thinking that this 16-year-old was not a uh, some lone wolf who just decided one day he believes this, someone put him up to that, maybe someone online or something like that. And that uh, that makes it. Matter of fact, I don't know if you uh, remember, AP, there was a there was a racist attack. I don't know, seems like 10 years ago or something like this, some like teenager, some teen, some white teenager went up into a, a black church like in South Carolina or something like this and, and shot the place up, killed a bunch of people. And everyone is flipping out because the police afterwards were being really nice to the kid and like getting him McDonald's and stuff like this. People were flipping out like, how are you not just beating the crap out of this kid? I'm like, you, you guys don't understand. If he's a teenager and they think someone put him up to it, you want to be that kid's best friend until you get that information out of him. Right. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're the cops who are interrogating this kid, you want to be his best buddy in the world until you get that information who puts you up to this? Yeah. Yeah. We want to, we, yeah, oh no, we're secretly on your side. Just tell us who puts you up to this, Mr. Uh, 15 year old. Uh, so probably similar situation with this. If the, if the cops think that this kid uh, was put up to it by someone else, they're probably going to try and be his best friend for a while until they get that information out of him. Um, but yeah, so looks like, and would not be surprising at all if this guy was put up to it by someone online or uh, in, the, in the local community or something. Hey, you want to be real cool? You want to be a total Chad? You want, to be a top, just, you want to be a top G? Somebody in the chat, in the chat just uh, Psalms 14 to me, uh, which. <laughs> yeah. I made a whole video about that. I, I know. Made a video yeah. about that. Watch um, David's video. Watch yeah. David's video on that, on, on the fool says in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> um, darn it. I was just about to say something truly awesome and epic. And then someone distracted everyone with Psalm 14. What, what was I talking about? I was talking about the kid and the kid and, oh, someone possibly putting him up to it. Someone possibly yeah. putting him up to that sort of thing. And then, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll come back to me. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and watch some of this video from the church. It starts off with another leader in the church and then, uh, and then it's going to go into Bishop Marmari Emmanuel's response to the attacker. Let's see what we got. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you. On the evening of Monday the 15th of April 2024, at approximately 7.05 p.m., whilst conducting live Assyrian Bible preaching, an attempt was made on the life of our beloved Bishop, His Grace Marmari Emmanuel. That was just the 15th? It feels like it was like a week ago to me. It was yeah. three days ago. Gosh. We wish to confirm that His Grace Marmari Emmanuel sustained non-life-threatening injuries during the attack. We can confirm that his condition is stable and is receiving great care. Other victims of the attack were Father Isaac Royal, who is now recovering well, and nearby church members who also received special care. I'm guessing. I'm guessing that that knife must have been partly open or something like that, because a bunch of people had injuries, which wouldn't happen if it was just mm -hmm. a fist. So seems like wasn't nearly as bad as it would have been. Things like partly open or something like this, or defective or something. But yeah, multiple injuries, and again, the, the uh, Bishop Marmari is still 
just posting audio only show. Anyway, we'll have to see. I'm guessing more more info yeah. will come out. It might be that um so we saw in the video that he realizes halfway that through that uh, that the knife didn't open so it might be that he tried in the process again but just think just think about how stupid this is that's just pretty stupid how, how that's like that's like level 10 stupid yeah it's, it's so dumb anyway yeah, continue real dumb real real dumb all right new south wales police have apprehended the attacker and the necessary rule of law shall prevail the unfortunate events which took place outside the church caused unnecessary delays and threats to both victims, paramedics and police. The church does not condone the activities which took place whereby several persons were injured, property damaged and delays in rendering much needed assistance. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened to the church. I know there are people throwing things and that some, some police things were delayed and uh, a couple of police had some minor injuries or something like that. But it's important what he's saying right here, because the church has always said, hey, uh, stop this stuff. But I, I still see I still see people in the comments going, oh, they're all hypocrites. They're responding violently. Well, not Bishop Marmari and not his church. They're saying, hey, stop this stuff. What you do, you, you do you do end up with a bunch of like enraged people like what you guys think you're going to come over here and attack our church. We're going to show you that we're we're strong, too. So you have that. But that is uh, that's not that's not the church. So you can't call out the church for hypocrisy on here. They seem completely consistent. Yeah, the first news that were, that was going around was that um, was that a crowd is gathering in front of the church uh, and that uh, that something like a riot ish uh, thing is forming. But uh, it didn't. It didn't escalate too much. I, I assume. So let's go. Oh, actually, uh, Grace, Grace, Hannah here. Uh, this is a super chat, so we'll be. Uh, this will come up later. But Grace says the police commissioner confirmed this morning that he was stabbed six times. She just says he. So I assume she's talking about a uh, uh, Marmari Emmanuel. So police commissioner. Yeah, you might want to check that out just to verify uh, what, what source this is coming from. But if this is correct, if Grace is correct, then the police commissioner has confirmed that Bishop Marmari Emmanuel was stabbed six times. So charged with terrorism. <laughs> is that what he's charged with? Charged with terrorism? Yeah. Yeah. Charged imagine, with terrorism offense. Can you imagine 16 years old, screwed up your whole life already. Idiot. Idiot. Uh, investigations to into classroom. a riot after the knife attack. Uh, I will. I will. I will look into this. Just continue. Yeah. Let me just see real quick. Okay. Yeah. It says pol police will allege the bishop was stabbed as many as six times, and that the bar that the boy had traveled for ninety minutes to reach the church from his home. So Ooh. yeah, that's what the police says. So he was. <clears throat> he had a plan. Went looking for him. You know who else had a plan, ladies and gentlemen? guy with the little mustache Never it also further that. says a riot broke out outside the church soon after the attack after an angry crowd demanded the suspected attacker to be handed over to them Whoa. more than 50 police officers were injured and 20 police cars were damaged so there, there did some so a, a a riot or a mob did form but the church tried to disperse it and calm the church down. was trying to calm people down and you got a bunch of people yeah. from the area finding out that Bishop Marmari Emmanuel was attacked by a young jihadi and they wanted to, they wanted to send a different kind of message to future jihadis and the church said nope we don't want to send that message uh here wow. interesting wow so so ladies and gentlemen we have it here sounds like he was stabbed multiple times Good mm -hmm. thing. Good thing he's uh, he's recovering well and already posting messages. But that explains why he hasn't made any. Uh, uh, that explains why it, so it sounds like he's still in the hospital, still recovering and recorded a message like on his phone or something like that. All right. This is making sense. There was a large contingent of people who were not members of the church who attended and caused a major disturbance. His Grace Bishop Marmari Emmanuel preaches love and peace. However, the events that took place were quite the opposite. It is his wish that everyone resort to private prayer and to not escalate the matter any further. The church is cooperating fully with New South Wales Police in all strike force investigations currently underway. We ask that whoever has any information in regards to the events which transpired 
on the 15th of April 2024 to please contact Crime Stoppers or local police. So in case anyone missed that, if, if anyone's down in that area or knows anything or pays any attention, when they're, when they're asking for anyone who has any information, there it's what we were talking about a minute ago. The main, que the main question, you've already caught the guy who did it. So the main question is, was this guy totally on his own or, or was he encouraged to do this by another person or another group? Because those other people have broken the law too, and police would love to capture them. Of it's Australia, so they might just want to capture him to give them awards or something like that, because that place is screwed yeah. up down there. What else do you expect? Entire island of criminals. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. This this just reminds me of such a such a um such a church way of handling things. Uh that um him sitting there and and uh gently reprimanding the people who came in, you know, who, who came to attack the guy uh for not acting peacefully. And uh I don't know, it's just it's such a such a Christian way. <laughs> it is. It's pretty like it's pretty like hardcore, right? Because yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we expect the public to cooperate with the authorities. Current social media messages claiming to be on behalf of the church, which are promoting a prayer vigil, are false. Please revert to the church's website, cgsc.org.au, official Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube accounts for all announcements. We wish to express our sincere thanks to all the first responders to bringing calm, and assistance to what was a horrific situation. <laughs> like this is the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> Isn't this funny? I'm like, I'm yeah. sitting there like, I'm sitting there's like part of me is like, come on, man, dial it up, dial it up to 10. But, uh, but then the other part's like, gosh, like seems like right on the money of exactly the way he should, uh, should be responding right now. Uh, I, I'm just, uh, in my mind, I'm contrasting that with how a Muslim authority would respond and be like, Who are you? Yeah, Where are you? You see the Islamophobes. The Islamophobes because of the Jews. The Jews Where are, are the authorities? Authority. We want to marry some. This is proof that we need to bang little girls, you see? <laughs> <laughs> you will not stop our powerful Dawah. No, they don't need to get attacked. Get they stronger, and soon we will take over. Hey, AP. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, AP, sorry. if you want, because you, have, you haven't been making regular videos in a while. You want one, you want one that'll, that'll be like absolutely through the roof, phenomenal, and easy to do because you already know all this stuff. Put something like comparing, <laughs> comparing the hate attacks against Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel and Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farouk. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be totally awesome, right? Look, if you don't want to, if you want to make a video on it, make a video on it. It'd be awesome. If not, we at least need to do a live stream where we bring up all the stuff about all the people who went to the police, said, "Hey, we." He said he filed a police report. We'd like to, you know, Freedom of Information Act. We'd like to, uh, we, we'd we'd like to examine the police report. Please, like, what? There's no police report. We have no clue what you anywhere you were you were talking about. <laughs> Sheikh Usman said, "Oh yeah, 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 went to court, and this man was found guilty, and he's in prison. Alhamdulillah, he's telling us the Muslims. Alhamdulillah, he's in prison. The Muslims, yay, he's in prison. So people go to the prosecutors, the courts. Uh, where is this guy? We heard he's locked up. What are you talking about? We've never heard one word about any of this." Plus the first thing he mentions, like uh, he, he gets uh, allegedly he gets uh, attacked or stabbed or whatever. And instead of talking, instead of uh, saying, OK, you know, just privacy, recovery, you know, prayer, this and that. The first thing that he mentions is you and me. Yeah. David uh, Wood and Apostate uh, Prophet. Where are they? Me. Where are they? The Islamophobes <laughs> got me. Where's David Wood and Apostate Prophet? They're responsible. <laughs> Look what they did. I've got ketchup all over me. Oh my goodness. Ah, where are you guys? Could you even imagine Bishop Marmari Emanuel responding like, oh, look, he stabbed me six times. Where are the Dawah guys? Where's Muhammad Ijab? Oh, you guys got. <laughs> But I mean, keep in mind, he could because that that's real. It's the Dawah guys encouraging violence against critics, which they do. And then someone goes and uh, and actually carries it. You could totally you could totally point a finger at those guys. You can even yeah. point a finger at like Andrew Tate, where he's he praises Muslims for getting violent over criticizing Muhammad. Yeah, that might be uh -huh. another uh, live stream we have to go through because uh, Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel has made responses to Andrew Tate for calling Christians weak and stuff. He's made uh, responses to him.
And of course, Tate tried to blame Jews on this attack anyway. So anyway, we might have to do a whole special show. Doesn't it feel like Tate's becoming totally irrelevant, though? Yeah. It's yeah. like hard. It's now hard for me to say, hey, we need to do something about Andrew Tate when ah, just not as big as he once was. Yeah, he was he was the most Googled man on the planet. <laughs> no, <laughs> that should be we his book. About him. I went yeah. from the most Googled man on the planet to the least Googled man on the planet. <laughs> How to destroy your career by lying endlessly yeah. and and uh, putting all your faith in morons and converting to Islam and hoping that'll get you through. And then <laughs> blaming everything on the ma- blaming e- blaming every mistake you've ever made on the Matrix. Stupid the moron. Matrix. Oh boy. The support and love shown by our fellow religious leaders, government, and community has been overwhelming. Our th- Even atheists, the support we've seen from the apostate prophet, I'll go ahead and put that in for you. Thanks and blessings to everyone, and above all, we thank the only everlasting, living, and eternal God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for his mercy and compassion during this time. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. I can't help. He's so nice, but in my in my mind, I'm like, this would be a perfect time to say, and when Allah tried to send his warrior, we saw that our guy was protected by Jesus. Something like that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But he can't do it. He's just too nice. No, 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 no. He is he is exactly appropriate amount of nice. Uh, we are not in that position, so we're we're YouTubers, so we can be meaner. I can't wait to see how the bishop will speak about it once he starts going out there and speaking because prior to this he did he did say he did say he did say that uh islam came with the sword islam uh uh, you know subjugated people uh and we don't need to do these things and 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 that kind of stuff i wonder what he will say now after this happened to him oh i mean he's got uh, he's got something awesome uh i mean the apostle paul by the end of his life he'd been uh He'd, he'd received the 39 lashes five different times, been beaten with rods, been shipwrecked. They stoned him. They stoned him. They thought, he, they thought they stoned him to death, but he survived and so on. And by the end, he could say, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus, meaning that he was basically covered in scars. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bishop Mar Mar Emmanuel will be able to pull that. I mean, anyone, what is Islam? Done? No, Islam's peace. Uh, look, I got the marks right here. I got bear in my body the marks. So... Your words, yeah. your words, just keep them to yourself. Oh, anyway, words. this could be that that 16 year old kid might have made the dumbest blunder of modern times as far as uh, thinking you're helping, thinking you're helping Muhammad. It was not the perfect move. It was not. The, it was a very unclever move. <laughs> it was the opposite of a clever move. And now a word. <laughs> from his grace, Bishop Matamati Emmanuel. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the, hey, look, hey, AP. Yes. There's your next tattoo. Oh, yeah. That That's perfect for, for other forearm right there. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, you know that forearm's feeling naked, AP. You know that forearm's yeah. feeling a little naked, feeling a little lonely, needs a little companionship. There it is right there, the entire world. The entire world should. Sh- I don't know if they would support this. I don't know their position on tattoos, but uh, <laughs> I shall. I the shall entire do. the Every- entire world should show solidarity with the church by getting that tattooed on their forearm. But, uh, ever since I got this tattoo, I I feel like I'm waiting for the next crusade. And when is it starting? Uh, when can I join? Like that's how I feel. Uh, AP's ready, ladies and gentlemen. AP's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's knock out these uh, super chats that are there, uh, and then we'll go ahead and we're going to look. We're going to listen to the response. Again, it's audio only, but it's because uh, he's still in the hospital, but we're going to listen to the response of Bishop Marmari Emmanuel, and he's got uh, thoughts for everyone, and he responds specifically to his attacker slash attackers, uh, whoever they may be. I should go to... Okay, that was a super sticker. Mike Winger be like... <laughs> That is a perfect description of Mike Winger. <laughs> oh, hi, everyone. Right here. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what app do you guys suggest for making YouTube shorts? I'm not the person to go to for that. The couple of shorts that I've made, I've had, uh, I've had your brother in Christ has made those for me. So I've never actually made a short. Have you made any shorts yourself, AP? I record things and then I edit them on uh, Premiere Pro on my computer. That's what I do. Yeah, they're also for people who, because I use uh, like uh, iMovie and Final Cut for videos and you can't do it on those programs. So if you don't want to learn another program like Premiere or something like that, there are websites where you can do it. You can go to the website and it'll it'll chop your, your video down and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I watched old video of Christian Prince uh, talking to a new convert. He asked him, do you want me to show you Ibn Kathir? Guy asked, does he have YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> So the guy said, you don't know what you're talking about, Christian Prince says. Uh, you want me to show you Ibn Kathir? And he's like, I don't know. Does the guy have YouTube? <laughs> awesome. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, let's see. D. Wood on the God Logic stream said to repeat the argument, ice melting metaphor seems you're not making a difference, but they will see the light eventually. Ahem, AP. Oh, yeah. I pointed out... Um, uh, for the people who are responding to the Ali Dawas of the world and you just you, you keep you keep talking, you keep answering them and answering them. It doesn't seem like anything's happening. So you've heard that before, AP, that like, you know, ice going from 22 to 23 degrees to 24 degrees to 25 degrees doesn't look like a change is happening. And then all of a sudden it did. And every mm -hmm. every step, every increase of a, of a degree of temperature was getting closer to that big change. And so, yeah, guys, and this uh, this with the bishop could be a big temperature change. It'll be, temperature it'll be change. awesome to see Hatun and the Bishop together. Yep. They both now have been stabbed in the name of Allah. Where is my stabbing? Yeah. We, yeah. It's not like, it's not like we don't give people every opportunity in the world. Why, why did nobody stab me so far? What is this man? Yeah. <laughs> We need, hey, we need to show him somewhere with like signs. Where, where's our where's our stabbing? <laughs> we'll, show, we'll show up at the next Dawa convention with hold out with signs outside. <laughs> why, are, why aren't we being stabbed? Um, uh, D here says, Eighth, again, if, if anyone's just tuning, tuning in, we just watched a message from the church. We're about to listen to the response of... Uh, uh, Bishop Marmari Emmanuel to his attacker. We're going through these super chats that we got uh, before they build up too much. It's, it's funny you say D here says, and uh, it sounds like you're saying D here says. Oh yeah, D here. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad's yeah. Muhammad's boyfriend D here Al Kalbi, D here the dog. <laughs> Isn't it funny his name's dog because that always like yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah. Uh, AP Atheist Republic will be covering this news on Sunday. It would be awesome if you would join us 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And I shall. Uh, that is awesome. So that is this that Sunday, is awesome. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Atheist Republic. Is Armin going to be on there? I'm assuming Armin's mm -hmm. going to be on there. All right, everyone, go check that out. Going to have a bunch of atheists going, oh, you see what religion does? <laughs> <laughs> No, guys. No, Atheist Republic. Uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're they're cool over there. Armin, 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 Armin Armin's they're Armin's very based. Armin's based. Very based. Um, when the bishop got stabbed, he said to the kid, "You fool! You don't have the." T oh, this is a joke. When the bishop got stabbed, <laughs> he said to the kid, "You fool! You don't have the testicular fortitude to kill me." What's funny is, what's funny is he could have gone in multiple directions and would have been totally awesome. He went the you know calling for forgiveness route. He could have gone the, ha ha! You can't kill me. I drink Red Bull. <laughs> I wonder what he what he says in his message to the to the to the attacker. Yeah, we're about <laughs> to find out, dude. We're about to find out. Police commissioner. Oh, yeah, this was the one from Grace. The police commissioner confirmed this morning that he was stabbed six times. Yep. Uh, so that watching you and AP for a while. Thanks for exposing Islam. We shall. Thank you. The rioters. This is interesting. I don't know what the makeup of the rioters were. Uh, it says the rioters were immigrants who are sick of Islam. Yeah. I mean, if I I don't I have zero information other than what we've what AP just shared. And I'd heard that there was something out there. I heard like two cops got injured or something like that. People were throwing stuff. Um, 
Yeah, so apart from this little bit of information, I don't know what happened, but it, definitely not surprising if you have an area with lots of immigrants or even it could even be like second, third generation. I'm telling you, the, the Assyrians and Armenians and Copts, Coptic Christians and so on, you have... You, they come from areas where they know about Islam and they, they, they have never bought into that. Oh, it's all, it's a religion of peace. They've never bought into that stuff. They know what they're dealing with and they do not want the jihadis to get into their mind that they can get away with this stuff. So that, that would, you would have a lot of people flipping out over, uh, over that. Uh, but I, I, I heard, I heard Sam Shimon was part of the riots and he, he went to come here, come here, come here sons of the devil come here yeah. uh, 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 that's what i heard but i'm not sure if it's true yeah uh and and uh again so in that that reaction is 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 uh, makes perfect sense have to say the church is is uh doing everything exactly correctly here in i mean just just imagine if they were being more aggressive and stuff and you say yeah you see everyone's everyone's the same they're not they're uh they're calling for peace. They're calling for forgiveness. They're calling for rule of law. It's the exact opposite of what we get from the Dawa guys. So, mm -hmm. it is true. <clears throat> uh, Benjamin Cohen, you hypocrites! How dare you talk trash about Islam while criticizing people for stabbing a man? We Zionists will not tolerate it. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> With a, with a picture of a jihadi. <laughs> with his Benjamin. <laughs> Still in the hand, though. Allahu yeah, Akbar. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, really, I don't know if you were paying attention, but Robert Spencer, uh, he was, of course, a posting about the attack, and and people were saying, no, it was, a, it was a Jew or someone else. He's going, well, the guy was yelling Allahu Akbar. And they're like, but Jews yell Allahu Akbar, too. <laughs> and he's going, Robert's going, okay, show me one. Show me one Jew attacking someone <laughs> while shouting Allah Akbar. Jews don't even regularly say Allah. Like uh, you can find among Christians uh, in uh, among Muslims in Muslim countries and communities that they will use uh, Allah. Jews are more reluctant to do that. Um, they will more. They will rather use the the Hebrew Adonai and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro here says you guys were blamed when you didn't condemn Uthman's imaginary stabber quickly enough. Yeah, <laughs> namely because I was on a plane. I was on a plane and no idea. Plane lands. And I'm getting these messages. David Wood hasn't condemned Sheikh Uthman's attacker. Oh, why is it because he supports this? <laughs> and here, yeah, how many? Uh, I, I don't know because I haven't been following. I haven't been following it. But have have all the Dawa guys come out condemning attacks, no. violent attacks on people? No. No, and when 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 Hatun was attacked, uh, lots of them uh, made fun of it or even approved of it and all that. So, uh, yep. Yeah. In fact, when 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 uh, when Sheikh Uthman was uh, attacked in his mind, uh, I did indeed make a make a post at first saying that this is this is not the way. So I did I did make it despite the fact that he wasn't even really attacked. Uh, yeah, but. They're not doing the same thing. Yeah, and we did. Yeah, we did live stream saying, "Hey, someone's attacking yes. him." Because, yeah, we, yeah, we condemned it. Yeah, turned out Don't to be. It. Turns out to this day, he may have been involved in some fight or something like that. But it was clearly the blood afterward was fake, and all all his story. I mean, just think how dumb that dude is. I mean, he could have just said, "Hey, guys, guys, stab an Islamophobe stabbed me. It was a hate crime. I'm fine. Uh, got it patched up, and uh, here I am at home." would have never been able to refute him. Instead, it's, and I filed the police report and they have the weapon and he's gone to court and he's been arrested and he's in prison. All this stuff that can be verified or refuted. Interesting. Story. I heard I heard the attacker uh, didn't yell Allahu Akbar. He yelled another Nakba. So that could <laughs> yeah. also be the case. <laughs> or, or as he's going up to stab him, people said, hey, are you hungry? And he said, yeah, I want a lot of snack bar. <laughs> And that's all that happened. Could be. Could be. Everything is possible. <clears throat> um, let's see. D. Wood, you should have Michael, uh, Dr. Michael Brown on to address rabbinic Jewish and Muslim objections to Christianity. That would be cool. I've had uh, uh, Michael Brown's have been on with me several times uh, over the years. Uh, but yeah, he's awesome. Awesome stuff. One of the one of the one of the best one of the best on the planet. 
Gray says the attacker has also experienced severe hand injuries due to his actions. I think he has oh. lost a few fingers. Yeah, and that's why there were rumors at the beginning when they finally bring this guy out and his, his hands all bandaged up. They were saying, uh, you see, the Assyrians were chopping his fingers off. <laughs> That's why I always say, look, we got to, whenever the initial reports are coming out, like th stories are going to change, ladies and gentlemen, once uh, people start reporting stuff and there's like mayhem. Um, mm -hmm. MM condemns his followers beating his stabber, Christian. AP would publicly behead whoever stabbed Bishop Dawkins. Atheist, draw your own conclusions. Oh, that's Mar Mar. Condemns his. Condemns his followers for beating his stabber. Christian AP would publicly behead whoever stabbed Bishop. Oh, Bishop Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> it's Prophet Dawkins. Prophet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a guy smacks the attacker's head like he's checking a ripe watermelon. The guy holding the attacker down in the church. It's hilarious. Yeah, I didn't. I saw. I saw some videos where they're, they're the guys running. The guys talking about why he was doing it and stuff like that. But. uh, um, <laughs> if a guy smacked him, that would be funny. Yeah, there was this guy who was like was who was uh, tapping on his head. Oh, like was a like, good boy, good, good boy, good boy, good boy. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. good, 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 good. Have you seen Freedom Tunes' last video? No, I haven't. Why is it connected to what we're talking about? I'm not checking it out unless it Freedom is. Freedom Tunes in like 50 years or so. No, yeah. Freedom Tunes. Used, uh, yeah, I used to watch Freedom Tunes. Used to make some good stuff. I just want to see. Yeah. Oh, it's about Ben and it. oh, it's about Ben. It's about Ben and Candace debating Israel. Ooh. Yeah, that's probably going to be funny. Yeah, I'm going to check that out as soon as this live stream is over. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have three new addictions. D-Wood, AP, and Bishop Marmari. D-Wood, I'm new. What does your bleeding toy goat mean? Uh, oh, D-Wood, I'm new. What does your bleeding toy goat mean? Please bleed him for me. Thanks. Okay, yeah. So this was... Uh, uh, Derek and L, uh, their channels are L ISO Elohim and your brother in Christ. They, we were saying, I was saying a couple of years ago uh, that I wanted to actually get a video made of a sheep or goat eating a page of the Quran with the Arabic written on the the verses about eating um, about uh, uh, feet breastfeeding an adult and the ones that a were eaten by a sheep, according to Sunan Ibn Majah, 1944, according to uh, a, a, a goat, depending on the other sources. And uh, and they're like, hey, we got we got sheep and goats up here. I'm like, oh, so I figure they meant like like two or something like that, like a couple sheep and a couple goats or something like that. Turns out they have like a million sheep and goats. They have this giant uh, uh, spread of sheep and goats. So uh, last Christmas, last Christmas, uh, Derek was saying something and I said, uh, hey, send me a goat for Christmas. But he did. He sent me this one. But it had uh, actual pages of the Quran in its mouth. So this is an actual Quran <laughs> eating goat. And uh, it makes a screaming noise, which everyone loves. So anyway, pretty cool. Pretty, perfect noise. pretty cool little co-host I have here. Guys, just, just so everyone knows, we performed some experiments involving sheep and goats and eating the Quran. We performed some, and this is actually, this is actually amazing, right? Cause you have a disagreement in the Muslim sources. Some of the sources say that a goat ate those verses of the Quran. And that's why they're missing. Other sources say that a sheep ate those pages of the Quran and that's why they're missing. So there's a, you know, there's a discrepancy. Someone's getting something wrong. We actually performed some experiments and we can say definitively a goat is massively, massively, massively more more likely to eat pages of a Quran. Sheep, nope. Uh, they're a bit resistant. Now, maybe this was like a really, really starving sheep, so it's always possible. You can't rule it out. But we can say a goat is much more inclined to eat pages of the Quran, and we will be sharing that video footage with you as proof. And we can, think of mine. We've solved a 1,400-year-old mystery. There's been a mystery for 1,400 years. Was it a sheep or was yeah. it a goat? We right. have solved the mystery. Muslims didn't. We did. We fixed their broken sources for them. Yes. All right. Hope that answers your question about the uh, goat. I was in the question. Israel is hitting Iran's nuclear facilities. You heard that? Is that going on? Uh, not sure. I've been running around like okay. crazy all day, so I don't know what's going on in the news. Um, not sure. Let's see. Go through the rest of the right now. The biggest thing that's going on is, is the is the uh, is the university thing. 
Oh yeah, Columbia, Columbia University. University. Yeah, there's there's always too much to actually cover in uh, anything. We're we're gonna have and to. Elon Omar's go. daughter got suspended from the from the university. Congresswoman <laughs> Ilhan Omar. <laughs> yes. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting stuff. All right, we still got a lot of super chats. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the video, and then we'll uh, we'll cover super chat at the end because uh, do want to get into definitely want to get to. Um, Bishop Marmari's response, uh, YouTube, let us do so YouTube create. Oh, Hey, uh, chameleon here says, uh, the YouTube create app is good for YouTube shorts. Okay. Yes, I didn't, even, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that because I've never paid much attention to, uh, shorts cause I don't like learning new things. Um, will the Bishop speaking of his scars count as Islamophobic? Isn't that weird? Like now you get to a point where you've been repeatedly stabbed in the name of Allah and they will st they will still insist that he needs to keep his mouth shut about Islam. It's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. All right. Wow. Today I learned that there is actually something called a YouTube create app. I had no idea. You didn't know about that either? <laughs> no. It's amazing. We're, we're getting schooled. We're getting <laughs> schooled by people in the chat who know YouTube better than we do. <laughs> That's fine. I've been I've been on YouTube since like 2007 or 2008, son. Wow. Wow. Anyway, let's see what the bishop let's says. Let's go. Let's go check. Let's check out the bishop here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Bishop Marmari Emmanuel from the hospital prepared to rain down fire on his attacker and his attacker's ideology. Here we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Um, this is Bishop Murray Emmanuel um, addressing our beloved faithfuls, whoever you are and wherever you are. We need to understand that we need to be always thankful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for whatever trials and tribulations we go through. Uh, we are carrying the cross. Let us not, not, not forget that at all. The Lord Jesus said to us, if you do not carry your cross every day and follow me, you are not worthy to be my disciple. You paying attention to all this, AP? Because I know it's popular for you and your atheist crowd to be, oh, all religions teach exactly the same thing and must be attacked equally. Yes. Okay. We thank the Lord Jesus for what took place in the last couple of days. Um, uh, I'm doing fine. I have to say, that's just awesome. We thank Jesus for what happened. <laughs> Love it. Uh, recovering very quickly, we thank the Lord Jesus. So there is no, no need to be worried or concerned. Uh, and a piece of advice to our, all, uh, our beloved faithfuls. I need you to act Christ-like. The Lord Jesus never taught us to fight. The Lord Jesus never taught us to retaliate. The Lord Jesus never said to us an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The Lord Jesus said, never return evil with evil, but return evil with good. For this is our master, our teacher, our leader, and our good shepherd who leads us to green pastures and still waters. So my, my beloveds, I want you to always be calm. We need to be always law-abiding citizen as well. We need to cooperate with the police directives, whether it be at a state level or a federal level. We uh, we uh, pray for our country. Our I, I, I seriously can't, like the, the thing that's hitting me over and over again is like how insanely different this is from the way the Dawa guys would be. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. If yeah. one of their guys attacked, at first would be, you see, this is what the Islamophobes do, and this is why they need to be stopped, and this is why we, well, alhamdulillah, we have to conquer them to keep them from doing this. And it would be, it would just be constantly, constantly uh, attacking in every direction. Uh, they're the victims. Oh, pity us, pity us, pity us. Look, we're, we're being persecuted here. Uh, everyone's evil. We're good. What's he responding? Like, where are the authorities? They are allowing this to happen because they are in it too. Yeah. And here you have Bishop Marma, who's just, I mean, he, three days ago, three days ago, he's uh, stabbed six times in the name of Allah. And it's just want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Just want to thank Jesus. Guys, we're called upon. We are told that we're going to be attacked. We're told 
that we're going to be persecuted. Why are you surprised? Why are you surprised by these things? And then he addresses his own community. You guys do not take matters into your own hands. Don't do, don't go out and attacking people. Act Christ-like. Act in a manner worthy of Jesus Christ and the calling that you've received. And hey, we we have to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray for our our leaders. Thanks thanks for all the you, the guy before him and stuff. It's it's hey, we're thankful to the first response. These guys are thankful, 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 thankful. Even in the middle of being a, being the victims of a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. That's based. But all religions are the same, huh, AP? Yeah. Beloved country, Australia, and our beautiful city of Sydney. Our beautiful city, our beloved country. Again, the double go, you see, look, these places are evil. This is why we need Sharia to be imposed on these wicked, immoral people. I don't know why I keep interrupting. It's just, it just stands out to me. Yeah. And we pray that the Lord Jesus always protects this country and the people of this country. And we should never forget that we are very blessed to be Aussies. But above all, we are... <laughs> this, this, this guy's an immigrant from Iraq. His family immigrated from Iraq. There are other people who immigrated from Iraq to the same place who do nothing but moan and wail and complain about the place. And say it's the worst place in the world. This place that we moved to to get away from the the hellhole that we left, uh, and we come here that take that took us in, and we'll do nothing but complain about it and say how it needs uh, it needs Sharia. And this guy, where he just got uh, just got repeatedly stabbed by someone uh, in that country, has is is nothing but grateful to the country that took him in. Very different. What are you laughing Look, at? Look, uh, mo especially Muslim immigrants, immigrants from Muslim culture. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Not sure about this, but pretty sure actually. But if you guys were like this, people would love you. Okay. If you guys were like this and appreciated the host country and the host culture, the way that this guy appreciates his host country and host culture, people would love you. But you are the opposite of this, which is why there are always problems. Yeah, especially, I mean, especially if you go to a, a, a place like Australia yeah. that's populated entirely by criminals and you were to go down there and be grateful that they took you in, people are like, wow, we're, we're nothing but a bunch of criminals down here and these guys are, are showing gratitude. So we can get along with these guys and said, you, no, oh, oh, it's, it's a bunch of criminals and they act like it. It's a horrible place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christians, and we need to act like it. Love never fails. Wow. First Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Whatever has happened to me personally, I thank the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a huge blessing for me. I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. And I say to him, you're my son. I love you. And I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Who? That Repeat was his that message to his attacker. Repeat that part. Repeat that part. Yeah, let's see. AP wants to hear this again, ladies and gentlemen. AP wants to hear what Bishop Marmari Emmanuel said when he addressed his attacker and whoever sent his attacker directly. Let me see. I'm not sure exactly where he said that. Let's see where he is. For me, I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. And I say to him, you're my son, I love you, and I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus. Forgive you, you're my son. Forgive you, you're my son. I love you, and I will always pray for you. I forgive you, and I forgive anyone who sent you. Is that is that how the Dawa guys would be uh, reacting right now if one of them had been stabbed six times in the name of Jesus? No. Don't think so. All right, one more time on that little part, ladies and gentlemen, because that was straight Christian fire. Heaped down like hot coals on the heads of all the haters. I... Uh... I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. 
And I say to him, you're my son. I love you. And I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, I have nothing in my heart but love for everyone. Whether that person is a Christian or not, that's uh, totally beside the point. The Lord Jesus always taught us to love one another. Love God and love your neighbor like yourself. Whoever that neighbor is, we need to love them and respect them as we love and respect ourselves. Look at this. I just glance at the comments, but we're getting some things like this. That boy wasn't Muslim. Islam doesn't teach that. Islam doesn't teaches teach exactly what? That. Doesn't teach to kill critics? Huh? <laughs> really? You, you're, telling, you're telling us what Islam teaches? The meme or theme me or theme me? Uh, no, uh, Maha, what, the only I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the only legitimate thing you can say. You can say that uh, s some Muslim authorities believe that you would only carry out the death penalty for blasphemy in an Islamic state. I don't think you can make you can defend that legitimately. The claim that this only applies in in an Islamic state, because keep in mind, AP, we've seen people like uh, Daniel Hakikachu. Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, on the PBD podcast, on the PBD podcast, when they're asked, uh, would in an Islamic state, would uh, would people like Brother Rashid and you, by extension, would you guys be executed? They they agreed, of course, of course, that would happen. Yeah. But they included blasphemers in there as well, people who commit yes. blasphemy. Okay, this this bishop committed blasphemy repeated times. He does it regularly. What would be considered blasphemy in Islam? And therefore, yes, in an Islamic state, he would he would be sentenced to death. That's not according to us. That's according to your Dawah guys. Now, the the question is, does can this teaching of Muhammad be applied without an Islamic state? I would argue that it can, just based on the fact that when Muhammad moves to Medina, there are, there are, there are Jewish tribes there, and when other people are criticizing Muhammad, he's sending people to assassinate them. And Muhammad thought that vigilante justice against critics was even fine. AP, you remember this story? This is in Sunan Abu Daud, ladies and gentlemen. But a man was uh, a man had a slave girl who was the father of two of his children. A man had a slave girl who was the father of two of his children. The slave girl kept talking trash about Muhammad. So the guy stabbed her to death, stabbed her to death, and like the blood ran out on one of her kids. Anyway, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad finds out about this. This young woman has been murdered. So he calls everyone around. Who did this? Who did this? And the guy comes out and he says, ah, prophet, she kept insulting you. She wouldn't stop. Muhammad said, no retaliation payable for her blood. So no retaliation mm -hmm. against this guy for slaughtering the mother of his children because she was making fun of Muhammad. That's the example Muhammad set for his followers. Vigilante violence against people who criticize him is perfectly acceptable. So I don't know how you get around the idea that what just happened in that church is perfectly okay, according to Muhammad. Yes. By the way, as we speak, um, news reports say uh, explosions in Iran. And oh, oh, is that what they were talking about with uh, saying that Israel's bombing their nuclear facilities or something? It, it, it has just, it has just. Hey, been whoa, we're over four thousand. Hey, we're over four thousand viewers, man. Hey, nice, 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 nice. <laughs> so Israel just hit uh, hit Iran. It looks like it has been officially announced, and there are explosions heard throughout Iran, but uh, details are cloudy. So this is happening right now as we speak. Yeah, huh. guys, uh, I have to say, um, lots of things that people, um, even when people disagree with me and say something uh, that's that you know you take a different position from what I take, uh, I still can understand your point, not think you're uh, crazy. And so, but so I'll just say whatever your whatever your position is on the Israeli Hamas conflict, whatever your position over there, even if you don't like, even if you don't like Israel or something like that, you should not be siding with Iran under any circumstances. 
There's no, especially no. a nation that is obsessed with getting nuclear weapons and is the nation that is most likely to use that sort of thing because these aren't like like you take you take uh, you take nut jobs like uh, you know the Kim Jong whatever's up in uh, North Korea. Those guys, those guys understand they want to be there. They want to they want to last a long time. They understand launching a nuclear weapon would be suicide, so they're not actually going to do it. Iran, these guys, these religious leaders are obsessed with bringing about the end times and, and forcing the, Mah the Mahdi's hand to come back and rescue them. They would love to start up a global conflict where the Mahdi has to come in and save them or they'll be destroyed. So they are, they're actually interested in their own destruction because they believe it forces the Mahdi. So these are the last guys in the world you want getting nuclear weapons. And so you should be, in you should be cheering for anyone who takes out their, uh, their ability to, to get nuclear weapons. <laughs> Yeah. Plus, uh, there are some people who actually really um, want to want to sit there right now and say, "Oh, I support Iran. I, I stand with Iran." Bunch of idiots. Um, Iran's official policy is death to America, death to Israel, and their proxies have official policies that say death to Jews and curse the Jews and death to America and death to Israel. <laughs> who in their right mind? Would, would support them while being from the West or pro-West. If you, if you stand with them, if you support them, if you defend them, you are not pro-West at all. You are, you are far from that. And uh, You're far it, it means you don't, that. yeah, <laughs> you don't appreciate where you are and, and the culture that you are in. This is, uh, this is the ultimate fight right now between future life, civilization and backwardness and destruction. And I don't know, just as as the bishop was speaking here, um, seriously, I, I I will say, and I don't care how this sounds, Christians and Jews are a a light in this world. Right? Christian culture is a light in this world. Exactly like it was prophesied, is a light we would be in this world. Islamic culture is the darkness in this world. It needs to stop and change and join the light. You heard it here, folks. Join the light. Christianity's a light. <laughs> Judaism's a light. Everything's a light. <laughs> you heard it from an atheist. Now you'll have you know you have a video response from Apostate Aladdin saying, and you see, see here, you see what he has just said. <laughs> <laughs> this this will this will destroy our mission of eradicating religion <laughs> from everywhere. And just think about how this would make a Muslim feel. Suppose <laughs> suppose the attacker suppose the attacker of Bishop Marmari Emmanuel were to tune into that and hear that that he's part of the darkness. He'll think that his stabbings are bad, and that will make his. I will hurt his feelings, and that's something we can never do <laughs> as atheists. <laughs> All right, I rewound this a bit just because it's awesome. Here's his response to his attacker. I uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act, and I say to him, "You're my son. I love you, and I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus' mighty name." Um, I have nothing in my heart but love for everyone. Whether that person is a Christian or not, that's uh, totally beside the point. The Lord Jesus always taught us to love one another. Hey, no idea, but I was just thinking about the Dawah guys, and it's like, oh, what would Muhammad Hijab be saying? Hey, well, see, if you believe God is on your side, why don't you long for death? Hmm? Why don't you long for death? Oh, why don't you, you kill yourself? You see, you see. He won't commit suicide, you see? This is the proof that Islam is true. It's like this idiotic How about nonsense. to get on your knees? Yeah, go and show it, go and show it. What is it with these guys, man? And Ali Dawah would be like, oh, I don't know how to respond to this. Hey, yo, smiles to Jenna. Come over here and dangle the, dangle the grapes in my mouth, yeah? <laughs> what is this, man? Guys, anyone, is there anyone on the planet who does not see the contrast here between this guy, our guy, and the Dawah guys, right? Oh boy! By the, by the way, it's smile to not smiles to, but you can just keep saying smiles because it's kind of funny when it's inaccurate. Smile to Jenna, smiles to Jenna. No, I'm, I'm going to stick with smiles to Jenna. It seems funny yeah. to me. <laughs> Love 
God and love your neighbor like yourself. Whoever that neighbor is, we need to love them and respect them as we love and respect ourselves. There's a guy who uh -huh. just got stabbed three days ago, six times got stabbed in the name of Allah by people who had been threatening him for criticizing Islam. His response, love. So I have forgiven them. I'm praying for them. And for this young man, I say to you, you're my son and you'll always be in my praise. May the Lord Jesus forgive you. May the Lord Jesus bless you and show you the way, my dear, my dear son. And once again, to our beloved faithfuls, we need to reflect Christ in our life. The Lord Jesus never said, go out and fight in the street. Never said to retaliate, but to pray. And this is what I'm asking everyone to do. Pray, my beloved. Thank the Lord Jesus and respect the law of this country and also adhere to the directives from our beloved uh, police force, from the commissioners. Uh, what, what are you laughing at there? You know what's funny? Um, the love that this guy, this attacker, and many other Islamists and, and, and Muslims for that matter, the love that he that the, that the guy uh, just received and heard from this from the bishop, from the very bishop to whom he walked up and uh, whom he tried to stab and kill. This love he probably never ever received from anybody else in his life, including his parents, including uh, his supposedly loved ones, his uh, relatives, family, and so on, and especially not from his uh, religious authorities and religious leaders and teachers, because they don't they don't have love, they don't show show love. They would consider that quite a weakness. So the the love that he received that he just got in response from this bishop after attacking the bishop and punching him in his face and trying to stab him on camera, he probably never received from anybody else in his life. And I hope that teaches him something. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because keep in mind, you know, this is the sort of thing that's going to go to trial. Uh, bishop Marmare here seems like the kind of guy who would who would want to go see him. I don't know if that'll be allowed pre-trial and stuff like that. Cause, uh, um, you know, there are, there are court issues and stuff involved about talking to witnesses and stuff ahead of time. But Bishop Marmari Emmanuel seems like the guy who would love to sit down with the kid and talk to him and tell him that he forgives him and so on. And that's obviously going to come up in court. So if this goes to trial, it's always possible that it doesn't go to trial. He could take a plea bargain or something like that. But if it goes to trial, I mean, what's Bishop Marmari going to be saying on the stand? The same stuff he's saying right here. It's gonna be, he's going to be on the stand with this kid looking like an idiot saying, hey, I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you. I'll always pray for you. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, again, it, it, it's, just, it's just striking to me. The difference after every terrorist attack carried out by Muslims in the name of Allah, when groups like the Council on American Islamic uh, Relations respond to that terrorist attack against non-Muslims carried out by Muslims, it's always, oh, but this, this is going to encourage Islamophobia. We need to we need to do something about the Islamophobia that's going to. It's always they're always the victims, even when it's their guys who are attacking. They're the victims. They're the victims. And this guy right here, he he's not he's not shouting to to non-Christians. He's not, he's, not, uh, he's not scolding Muslims here. He's saying, guys, we want nothing but love. And he's talking to his own community, the Christian community. Guys, do what Christ commands right now and don't, don't become violent over this. Don't do it. Very, like, like polar opposites in this world, polar opposites. And to everyone else in this um, government, we need to be uh, law-abiding citizens. God bless you all. And uh, God willing, we will see you soon and uh, go back to our normal duties once again, serving the Lord from the heart. God bless. Take care. And there's your tattoo again, AP. Wow, 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 wow. We'll probably listen to the, uh, to the end of that one more time because that was super, uh, that guy's spitting super hot fire. I mean, I, I knew that... Uh... I expected to hear good words and to hear forgiveness and kindness from him. 
but it was just all positive. It was all love, all forgiveness, all understanding, all about being calm and just, I don't know. It's uh, no ounce of, <laughs> of hate or anger or uh, re retaliation, whatever it is. No ounce of taking opportunity of this attack. Nothing at all. It's just all love and forgiveness. That's it. And and That's... no no poor me. No oh I'm a victim. It's yeah. hey uh, I'm a Christian. I'm yeah. you know, I'm, I'm called upon to endure this sort of thing. Uh, nothing but love. Uh, thank Jesus. Thank Jesus for this. Um, guys, don't retaliate. You're not supposed to retaliate with violence against other people. Um, Nothing and forgiveness, forgive, love and forgiveness towards a guy who just attacked him and towards whoever incited him to do it, a.k.a. the Dabo guys, probably. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. All right, guys, uh, we got a bunch of super chats here. We'll go through these super chats, then we'll listen to that last part, uh, last part again, and then we'll uh, we'll close out. Uh, what is this? Even Aaron Ra, who worships Satan, wouldn't just stab someone, stab anyone because of beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he's he's one of the not real satan worshippers right the one that's like satan's like a symbol or something like that but yeah yeah okay that's what i thought he 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 just he follows um satanism as a form of satire mm -hmm. like as, as a provocative point to make that's it yeah which i find a little bit ridiculous but uh yeah. to each his own i guess yeah but, <laughs> but yeah we can say we can say uh aaron ra who worship satan as some sort of symbol or something like that would still yeah. be way better would still be way better behaved than uh than a young aspiring jihadi who wants to follow muhammad's example yes videos cortos functional bien para tiktok oh i see see hmm. andrew tate used to be on an infowars commercial they took that ad down faster than steven crowder fired sven computer that's funny. What? Why wouldn't he want uh, Andrew Tate? Andrew Tate's still got a couple fans. Uh, okay, but how y'all have good camera quality, yo cam? Wait, what? Yes. We get good cameras and use how to use them. I, 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 I mean, it's, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll actually focus on getting everything right and setting up the lighting appropriately and, and so on. And I could get good camera quality and stuff. But yeah, uh, most, I mean, you could get really good camera quality for videos just like on your on modern cell phones now modern cell phones are like better than you'd have to get expensive cameras 15 20 years ago to get what your your cell phone can get nowadays uh d wood what made you make islamicize me been watching it all day funny stuff man god bless you legends uh i had the idea for several years and then um in my mind it was originally going to be like a one day thing, like all the stuff that happened in Islamicize me was going to happen in one really awful day where people convert to Islam and then they start following all this weird stuff from Muhammad. Uh, then when I was explaining the concept to vocab, I was like, hey, you know, it's, it's it, make it like a put it in like a demo documentary, like, uh, you know, supersize me, like that sort of thing. And he goes, Islamicize me. And I was like, oh, so vocab came up with the title Islamicize me. And I was like, oh, we should actually make it like super supersize me where he spent 30 days he spent 30 days eating nothing but mcdonald's food and studied the impact on him so the parallel was we're going to spend 30 days following muhammad's teachings to the letter and see what impact that had on us and of course we we almost died uh love this channel what does innovation mean in islam i kept hearing the term on god logic stream earlier Innovation it is a um, it, it is it is a concept uh they call it uh bid'a, which is um so it it is considered a a shameful disgraceful corruption of islam when um when muslims uh invent something or introduce something as an islamic teaching or a habit or a tradition that uh that cannot be found in the teachings or the sayings of muhammad or in the quran uh so if uh, a, a muslim comes and and starts praying a certain way and says oh you can pray this way and you, you can say this during this prayer but you can't actually find that anywhere in any text uh and not in the sunnah not in the quran that is uh an innovation and islam is very strictly against 
that. Yeah, Muhammad said every innovator will go to hell. Yes. Um, so the AP, the reason that popped up was God Logic called into a Ali Dawa show. It was three. It was three on one, and they were they were claiming that Jesus is a Muslim, and that the Bible agrees with this. So uh, God Logic said, "So how, how's Jesus a Muslim in in the New Testament?" And Ali Dawa instantly goes, "He goes, well, he submitted. So he said he called God my father." <laughs> <laughs> And then God logic just, he was being re, he was being really calm, but he was take, they kept trying to derail in every single direction. And he just dismiss every other thing they're bringing up. And he stayed like laser focused on that and kept, but wait a minute. So according to the Quran, Allah is not a father. So how would that be? How would that show these Muslim if in Islam, you don't call God father? And then they're like, oh yeah, but we don't believe it's literal. It's literal in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. And then God logic, he goes, uh, he goes, whoa. And, and, and the Quran doesn't say just don't, don't believe it literally. Allah's not a father in any sense, according to the Quran. So how could you do that? And in the end, by the end, they had to say that at the at the very least, if Jesus did call God father, it would be innovation. <laughs> and so, so the takeaway was, okay, the God, uh, I mean, the Jesus of the Bible at best is a horrible innovator who encouraged uh, massive <laughs> innovation in other people. And that was, that was, that was the takeaway. That, was that awesome. would mean that he was not a Muslim. That would mean that he was not a true prophet because a prophet cannot uh, cannot introduce an innovation. A prophet mm -hmm. cannot go astray and and do that. That is that is uh, that that goes directly against their doctrine, especially against Salafi doctrine. It's you can't accept something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. it's, that's that stupid. is correct. So anyway, that was an epic fail for the Dalma team. <laughs> uh, Daniel High Kick a Pikachu says today my toilet ex. Exploded with explosive Sharia, powerful, powerful stuff. Uh, do um, you think there will be any real life implications of Islam eventually becoming the biggest religion besides Muslims becoming even more insufferable on social media? Keep up the great work. I don't think Islam is going to take over. I think we're we're seeing the uh, we're seeing the beginnings of its implosion. Yes. Yes, I think there would be massive implications if Islam actually took over. I do not think it's going to happen. Uh, I mean, again, guys, in, in a period of like 15 years, they went from uh, uh, an apostasy rate among young Muslims of close to zero percent to over 24 percent. That is that I mean, that is that is a massive spike. And it's part of the reason these guys are flipping out right now in every direction. There's a, it's all connected to Iran and what they're doing and Hamas. It's all connected. The Dawah guys flipping out. This guy going in there and stabbing, uh, trying to kill a, guy, a critic of Islam. They are in panic mode and they they don't know what to do. So things may get messy. Things may get worse before they get better. But Islam is imploding. Careful, AP. If D would get stabbed, he'd become a martyr for our living God, Jesus Christ. If it's you, AP, get stabbed. It was stupid. <laughs> no, it, would, it would be fun. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> if David gets stabbed, he's a martyr. If you get stabbed, it's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to have fun. Uh, let's go. Love fun. you guys. Uh, kind of separate question, but do you guys have any book recommendations on learning about Muhammad's life? I want to study it further. Um, if you're talking about, did you say book recommendations? Book recommendations. Um, yeah, I mean, you can get, if you want the, you could get the earliest biography, Ibn Asak. Um, you have lots of the like chronology and stuff that can be, yeah, the <laughs> lists of names and stuff that can be pretty painful. You can kind of skip through some of that stuff. I mean, if you want to pick one, I go, uh, I go with Robert Spencer's. If you want just like a one volume thing, uh, Robert Spencer's, uh, what's it called? The Truth About Muhammad. I think you could find that in just PDF now because that was, that was like 20 years ago he wrote that. Uh, but I think you get that. He he has his new one, Muhammad, a critical biography. I think that's arguing more for some of the uh, Muhammad mythicism and so on. But if you just want like uh, the biography, uh, the truth about Muhammad, that was just this is what his life is, according to the the early sources. Yes. So those would be a couple of recommendations. Hey, P, you should write a, a biography of Muhammad. Uh, I should just write my own life. That would be the same thing. Islam is a religion of peace. I don't care how many people I have to kill to prove it. Muhammad, probably. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, Zionists say... Uh, 
Zionists say Ezra who Akbar. <laughs> 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 hey guys, if you don't know what, what that's referring to, uh, if you're new here, uh, the Quran says that Jews call Ezra the son of Allah. And the, in the Hadith, Muhammad says that the, the main charge against Jews on the day of judgment will be that they worship Ezra. We can't find a single Jew who's ever called Ezra the son of God, and we can't find any evidence of Jews ever worshiping Ezra. But the Quran, the Quran applies that as standard among Jews. It's just the rule among Jews. Horrible, horrible historical blunder. Uh, which Dawah Gandis is most like Muhammad in your opinion? What? Which Dawah Gandis is most Dawa like Muhammad? Which is most like Muhammad in your opinion? Muhammad Hijab. That's a tough question. <laughs> I'd have to say, he's, he's kind of like a compilation of Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawah, and Daniel Hikikichu. You roll those guys up into a big ball, marry it to a nine-year-old, and you got Muhammad. Yes. Oh, here's one. Hey, AP, this one's good for you. You think divine intervention took place? Yeah. See, you got it here, folks. Of course. How else would we explain this? Yeah, so... This is one of those this is one of those situations where you can totally think that's divine intervention fits perfectly. I mean a guy who has a guy kind of dead to rights, he's at least going to be able to to stab him multiple times. He went right for the face and he's going right for the face and neck and folding knife malfunctions and so on. I mean think you could have had just a regular kitchen knife that wouldn't have had that problem. But he brings in he brings in a folding knife um so looks like it, but it's also a situation where weird stuff can weird stuff can happen. Weird weird stuff can happen. So uh, I'm totally open to the idea that it's divine intervention. I can't say that it was because I I don't know. It was of course. Apparently, the knife folded back on itself, cutting off the boy's finger. Yeah, I'd be interested what what the details actually come out because I've heard three fingers. I've heard he just cut his hand. I've heard cut a finger off. We're gonna have to get more accurate information at some point. I wonder if he's going to eat it afterwards. I don't know. That's just all I want to know. Yeah. And I wonder which hand it was. I mean, if he's, if the knife's malfunctioning and he's stabbing with his right, he's going to have problem eating. because He's supposed to eat with these three fingers. You're going to finish that finger. Or what? I wonder if they did cut a thing. If he did cut a finger off, I wonder if they like, uh, sewed it back on and stuff. Nice. These are some interesting details. We're going to have to have an update in a couple of weeks. Once we, uh, find, find out everything. Uh, nice. starting a YouTube channel, didn't plan to, but it happened. Found out how little I know. Lol. God bless you both and keep, uh, you and make his face shine upon you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Israel have just attacked Iran. Can't blame him for that one. That's what you say, but I still, uh, the, the news are kind of strange. All they say is that there, an attack took place, uh, but the, there, there's very little detail about what is actually happening. Yeah. And again, that's always it, it, it sucks because as soon as something happens, you kind of want to jump on it because that's when interest is at its peak. But I prefer waiting a day or two whenever possible because what's information funny is changes. Uh, Iran uh, did a lot of barking and did very little in actual strikes. They started announcing like, we are proudly attacking the Zionist entity and we are punishing them at this and that blah, blah, blah. Israel is not saying anything right now <laughs> that's funny um that's oops. how it should be yep so not sure not sure that and definitely can't research it in the middle of a live stream but yeah that is something yep. that is something we'll be checking out tonight afterwards um AP is blue balling Christians he will not convert and this is from Paul the liar so you know it's a person who hates the Apostle Paul which shows why he's a despicable individual here in the chat. Alan yeah. Robertson says, forgive AP for he knows what he's doing. If they are good and the best of humanity, leave them a believer. Alhamdulillah. AP's a Christian. He just doesn't know it yet. That's funny because I heard from Jews that I'm a Jew. Uh -huh. And I hear from, uh, I hear from Muslims that I'm an atheist. <laughs> 
Good point. Hey, oh, this says there were three explosions. There were explosions in Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Yeah, I I, I see that too. That there uh, there were explosions in different countries, and it, it also says targets in Lebanon, but I'm not sure. So <laughs> it looks like uh, at first Israel is doing um, Israel is really demonstrating power right now, but I'm not sure what's actually happening. We know. will, guys. If there are bombings going on, we will be we will be discussing it soon enough. But yeah, we're going to need some more accurate information to come out. Uh, Bishop, what, one thing is one thing that is that is important is that is that uh, all these countries, all these uh, the, these 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 states and these organizations, they're scared. They're scared of Israel. Seriously, they they are terrified of Israel because they speak they speak a lot, they bark a lot. Iran, Hezbollah. Syria, uh, Hamas, and all that—they they, they bark a lot, but they are—they are little nothings in comparison to Israel, which no, is we... a giant, advanced military power that, by the with, way, with builds lots its of own shekels. thing. With lots yes, of and they yeah. got all the shekels. They, they talk the shekels. a lot, but they—they they are terrified of Israel striking back. And terrified. They yeah, they are, and that's what I mean, guys. If they thought they could win, they would. They would declare war. They've just. They've learned their lesson yeah. from yes. actually going yes. all out. They've got. They've been crushed repeatedly, and get. They would get crushed even worse nowadays than they would back in the day. They know it, but they kind of. They. It seems like a bunch of them want to kind of flex and act like they're doing something and so on until things they're calm cowards. down, so they can. Yeah. Cowards. Pretty pretty pathetic. Bishop Marmari Emmanuel is who he is because of Jesus our Lord. Put on the mind of Christ and you'll be free. That's correct. Iran getting bombed right now, according to Masab Hassan. Oh, you, uh, that's what Masab Hassan Yusuf has said. Is it time to call for a ceasefire already? <laughs> a ceasefire. <laughs> well, he also chooses the cow, so I'm not sure. I would choose the, if I had to choose between ceasefire and the cow. I will choose the cow. <laughs> hey, more from Benjamin Cohen here. <laughs> <laughs> I warned you not to criticize the prophet AP. You didn't listen, so now our missiles are striking Iran without warning you beforehand <laughs> to cover it live. <laughs> That's good. That's beast. Uh, let's see. Jesus and the Father are one. How could anyone distinguish the divinity between them? It is foolish to think you have the capacity to understand the greatness of Jesus from the greatness of the Father. Okay. Not sure whether you're trying to argue for Unitarianism there or something like that, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're responding to with that. But anyway, there are two distinct persons within the divine nature. That's according to Jesus himself. He said that he and his father are two witnesses. So that would make sense if they're exactly the same. But yes, they share the same nature. Uh, all are sinners, but the Lord Jesus came in flesh, lived a sinless life, died, and rose, so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it oh, but it was a Zionist who attacked the bishop. I swear on Muhammad. <laughs> Muslims. <laughs> Iran also has the right to defend itself. Also Muslims. Uh Shea Guthman. Oh, Shea Guthman. Is that Shea Guthman? Fakes a stabbing, does nothing but complain and lie. Bishop Mar Marmari gets uh, gets the crap stabbed out of him and responds with love, grace, and truth. Draw your own conclusions. Yeah, guys, and you can think. See, within Christianity, you have a you have a spectrum of people. With Islam, within Islam, you have a spectrum of people. You can find total like you can find horrible people from from any background. Christianity, Judaism, atheism, Islam, and so on. You can find really nice people from every background and so on. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, when we're talking about Bishop Marmari Emmanuel, this is a guy that you can say is actually really, really following the example of Christ and how he's uh, reacting to this situation. And he's not some random guy off the street. He's a prominent uh, representative of Christianity. And compare that with Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farouk, pretending to be victim, staging a hate crime against himself, 
lying constantly about it, saying things that are verifiably false. In other words, he says he filed a police report. There was no police report. Saying the guy was arrested. No one was arrested. Saying that this guy went to jail. Didn't go to jail. Saying that he was he went to trial. Didn't go to trial. Saying he's in prison. Not in prison. Just lie after lie after lie. And then what does Sheikh Uthman do at the end of it all? He, uh, guys, one of his, uh, Dawa buddies sends him his wife for marital counseling and Sheikh Uthman bangs his wife. <laughs> okay. This is not some random Muslim. You can find some <laughs> random dirtbag Christian who does dirtbag stuff. This can happen. Look at what we've got in front of us, guys. Yeah. Big difference. Big Acting difference. Acting like Muhammad. Acting like Muhammad. And, and, uh, and I'll say this because it, if you did have, if, if, let's say if Bishop Mar Mari came out and did something horrible, committed adultery with his friend's wife and stuff. You wouldn't see Christians like defending him to the death. We, we would condemn it. We would condemn that. Yeah. And Islam, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're, if you're a popular Dawah guy and you're sticking it to the, you're sticking it to the Kufar, you could literally get away with, with murder and molesting endless people. They don't care. It's, they don't care how much you love. Do, do not expose his sin, hide his sins. Yeah. Hide, that, they, they actually say that cover, cover it up, yeah. cover it up. Yeah. The Christian light is from a bulb. That's true. Uh, this guy's is in redial. I'm thinking it's a reminder we should have uh, loved and prayed for those who harm us too. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Was meant to say he is amazing, not <laughs> redial. I'm, uh, uh, I have blindness without glasses on. Okay. Yeah, we got it. He is amazing. Yes, yes, he's amazing. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know who he was beforehand. I recall I had seen pictures. I had no idea who he was because he was popular on like TikTok and stuff. I don't follow TikTok. He's going to be massively more, more, uh, more better known right now. And that is an awesome thing. And again, we want, if you weren't here at the beginning, we want these attacks to fail so that people realize they only backfire and they get it out of their heads that they're going to go around killing people. God is love. Anything else is blasphemy. You see, brothers and sisters, you cannot and must not go towards the light. You see. You Too see. late. He already said, go to the light. Uh, Islam is a religion of peace. And there's a piece of you here and a piece of you there. There's a piece of you stuck to the ceiling. That is Islam. Here we have Simone. I feel like crying. This, I think this was right after we were playing the uh, clip from uh, Bishop Marmari, I feel like crying. This is Christ-like love. Jesus washed Judas's feet, even when he knew Judas would betray him. His love is his victory. That's a good. Uh, that's a good saying for for the bishop here as well. Uh, his love is his victory. Hey, incels want seventy-two virgins, but not Islam fault. Mm -hmm. The bishop's love is greater than that of Allah. Yeah, it is. Allah has, it's important to know when, when people are, are claiming that, hey, we all have the same God, uh, the God of the Bible loves unbelievers. And you're told, if you want to be like your father in heaven, you have to love your enemy. The God of the Quran has no love for unbelievers. And that's why it just yes. doesn't bother lots of the jihadis that they're killing unbelievers. Uh, they, why should they care about them? Allah, Allah doesn't love them. That, that, is, that is true. Um, the God of the Quran to, it explicitly says that Allah does not love uh, those who don't believe. Mm -hmm. Us Christians are forgiving. They are lucky. Yeah, it is. If Christians, if, if Christians really decided, Hey, we're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to seek revenge. Guess what? We still got the most powerful nations on earth. Um, uh -huh. you guys are gushing. Where did your sarcasm go? I'm seriously rolling my leather straps. Oh, we've got the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Palestinian is less than B Palestinian. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's got to be one of your fans. Uh, Probably. Let's see. Let's see. Grotty discussion in the chat. Theme meme says zero contradictions in Islam. What? Another asked if we could name a single contradiction because that's not what was taught. Can you help us with a few basic truths? A few basic truths. What are you guys asking for Quran contradictions? Uh, check out, uh, where was that? We were on, I was on, were you on there with me on Inspiring Philosophy? Yes, yes, Inspiring Philosophy, yeah. Is that where we went through some Quran contradictions? Yeah, about the, uh, that was on the Muhammad Hijab uh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, we went, into, we went into some details there, ladies and gentlemen. We actually pulled up verses. But yeah, I mean, very, very simple. Go to answeringislam.net, answeringislam.net. Go over to the Quran section, look at the contradiction section. It's a big, long section. Some of those are very, very basic. Some, in some passages of the Quran, Allah creates the earth first, then later he creates the heaven. Another passage, he creates the heavens first, then later creates the earth and so on. You have issues like that. It uh, And... You can't make some of this stuff fit together. Some of them you can kind of reconcile. Some of them do not fit together. But yeah, go there. Plenty of them, piles of them. Matter of fact, I, I've been wanting to do, I just mentioned it the other day to some people who said, hey, it'd be cool to have a show like, or a video, the top 10 contradictions in the Quran. But that's that's going to require some work because there are lots of, there are lots of at least potential contradictions. And so it actually would be, a lot of work trying to narrow it down and kind of rank them like this is the worst, most glaring contradiction in the Quran. Might have to do it. Might have to do it. Might be a situation where we all, where like several of us get together, read the entire Quran, point out all the contradictions, and then like get together and decide what are the what are the most epic ones here. Inshallah. We'll do that. Um, great job, brothers in Christ. You including AP there? Or are you talking about like the guys Me? on the video? It's probably mean someone else. Got to mean someone else. Dr. David, what denomination are you of? Z I have zero denominations. Would you ever play TF2? It's free to play. Don't know. Never heard of it. And I, I, pro I probably won't. I don't like you. Like, I remember the old Nintendo controller and stuff like that. I have a problem learning new controllers. They have all kinds of weird buttons on there. Nice. Latest report, Israel retaliates against Iran. That's what they say right now, but it's it's all it's all foggy, all very very Let's foggy. See. So literally foggy, because that's what happens after bombings. You got to got yeah. that. There's a reason you got to let the dust settle, ladies and gentlemen. Iran was saying uh, uh, Israel wants to hit our nuclear sites, and if they're going to do that, then we will start going nuclear. But don't do it. Uh, and uh, apparently, there has been explosions in Isfahan, which is where nuclear sites are. Um, <laughs> But right now, and they also say that there are multiple sites that, that Israel uh, allegedly targeted and directly striked without any announcement, military bases and military sites in Iran. But everything is unknown at the moment. Hmm. So, guys, yes, we will probably, uh, as more information comes out, if it's something that requires our astute commentary, we'll probably be covering that here in the very near future. Markets are going crazy right now. That's kind of funny. Oh, does Islam, hey AP, does Islam encourage science like Christianity does? I'm thinking of things like the Islamic Golden Age having scientific growth. No, but Islam encourages golden show. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, need a, we need a picture of Muhammad Hijab and then those messages from him and put something about like, Islam's real golden age or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the golden age of Dawa. <laughs> no, um, Islam doesn't doesn't encourage any such such thing. Um, you can't really find it. You, you, you did have um, a, a period that is called the golden age that is referred to as such as a result of Islam uh, radically expanding, taking over certain cultures and those cultures then uh researching readily available information and expanding on that but it, it that does not come from islam islam has no islam plays no factor mm -hmm. no yeah role. guys so i mean keep in mind so like christianity doesn't say hey go out and and understand everything uh it was kind of it, it, you you because we know, because we we have the we have the writings of the pioneers of the scientific revolution, people did get the idea that they're created in the image of God, that the universe was created. They drew various comparisons. They compared the universe to a book. They compared the universe to like, uh, um, to like, like like God is like an arc. He's like a cosmic architect making a, uh, an, an amazing structure. They compared it to a watch. And the Christian view was because we're created in the image of God, then the more you go out and learn about God's creation, the more of God, the more of God's knowledge you're sharing. And they viewed it as like a kind of worship. So they focused on science and then they kept running with it. 
as AP pointed out, Islam would encounter science and philosophy. So they, there was a period where they had a, a, an explosion of like uh, philosophy for a while. Uh, same thing with science. They would expand. They would get the writings of other groups. And they would actually, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's the same with science, but I know like in philosophy, they had to go to the ruler and say, hey, we've got some books by some philosophers. We would like permission to go through these books to see what use it can be to Islam. And they would get permission. Then, then philosophy takes off for a while. And then eventually the leaders decide this isn't helping at all. It's making people more skeptical and so on. And so Islam just ends up suffocating it. So you have this, this is how it happens. This is how it happened. Islam expands. They get some knowledge. They run with it for a while. Islam suffocates it. Islam suffocates it. And then it stops. So anytime you're hearing about the Islamic golden age and so on, or this and that, just ask, why didn't it last? And you can ask Muslims, why didn't it last? And, and then figure out who they blame. They're going to blame someone. They're going to blame the Jews or the Christians or something. They're going to blame someone for things not lasting in Islam. When it's like, did, did you guys seriously? I mean, you had, you had a massive empire, a giant caliphate for centuries. You're telling me that because of outside people, this stopped your gold, this stopped your golden age, this stopped your science, this stopped your philosophy. You only had like 487 billion chances to start it up again. You never did because it doesn't fit in well. There is one factor uh, where an outside force did come and probably contribute to the decline of science uh, in, in the Muslim world. And that was, um, that is the, the, the Mongol invasions the mongol invasions which 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 uh destroyed baghdad which was the center uh which destroyed the muslim world and basically uh you know shattered it and, and divided it severely and um certain people in muslim culture uh, or in islamic history did blame the mongols but uh, the thing is, the Mongols didn't directly cause the destruction and decline of, 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 of scientific advancements. What happened is that as a result of the Mongol attacks, lots of, uh, lots of scholars and others among the Muslims came out and basically said, uh, all that we have, all that we are doing uh, helped us in no way because we pursued worldly matters instead of focusing on, on Islam on our religion, on our on the morals and so on. Uh, one of them, yeah, uh, SPK is pointing it out Ghazali. Ghazali is one of the one of the people who are front runners of that whole idea that uh, you know, if we forget about science, screw mm -hmm. science, focus on uh, your spirit and focus on Allah and this and that. And um, they basically, with with that mindset, destroyed and crushed it. Um, mm. But but that was but that that's on them. It's not that's not on the Mongols or on the others. That's on them because mm -hmm. th they thought, oh, this this happened to us because we were so we were we were distracted. Now it's time to focus on the real stuff, and that's where things started going downhill once again. Yeah, and that's kind of the point. It's like any setback you want to point out. Well, guess what? That setback goes away. So does it get started again? And it just never does. Never does. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then if you would ask someone, they're just going to blame other people for why the Ummah seems to have very little resilience for things, right? You have, mm -hmm. you, have, you have other cultures and it doesn't matter. Bad things can happen. They just keep moving forward. More bad things happen. They keep moving forward. And Islam is just, eh, no, we're going to let's just sit around and whine and blame everyone else for everything forever. Uh, on a global level and in the world of Dawah, what do you think the response to Israel's attack on Iran will be? We don't know the details yet. You can't be asking us for, we don't even know the details. So we have to, before we say what's going to happen on a global level, we have to find out what's happened at all. Will there be a tipping point, Muslims versus redheads? <laughs> Yes. Redheads like to convert to Islam because they feel like outcasts and want to stick it to their cultures. That's been a meme forever, right? Because there are so many seemingly so many gingers. ginger converts. Yeah, the gin, ginger Muslim. That, but convert. that's actually the th that's actually the theory. Because I didn't know, guys. Because we don't we don't have that here. Uh, like apparently there are like people who really really like make fun of redheads over there. <laughs> um, but apparently these guys are like horribly bullied their entire lives, and then a, a Muslim comes up to them and, hey, you want to stick it? You want to stick it to the rest of these people who've been making fun of you your entire life? Convert to Islam. Well, the Muslims come and say, hey, you want to be part of, of our of our group? They're like, what, me? What? No one's ever, no one's ever invited me? me to join anything ever. A ginger? <laughs> you want me? Of course. <laughs> uh, 
shekels for your efforts. Thanks, guys. Uh, let's see. Are there any good books in Spanish about Islam? I could not find any good books in Spanish, so I bought Robert Spencer books. Well, Robert Spencer's books are good. Uh, in Spanish, I don't know. I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming some of the books like Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus, uh, like Nabil's books, I'm assuming they've been translated into Spanish. So yeah, I'd look for some of the good books. Uh, I would especially look for Answering Islam by Norm Geisler and Abdul Salib. See if that's been translated into Spanish and uh, Nabil's books. Check those out. But those would be those would be pretty good ones in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Um, hi, guys. Let's read Sahih Muslim 146 for all the viewers. Sahih Muslim 146. That's a good one. That's a shareable. That's a shareable one. You got it? It says... Verily, Islam started as something strange. Strange! And it would again revert to being strange. Started strange, and it's going to go back to being strange. And it would recede between the two mosques, just as the serpent crawls back into its hole. Uh-huh. One of the uh, ongoing issues with the uh, Muslim sources is that they seem to say absolutely everything. Like, everything that could possibly happen that's what that's what they say it's happened so no matter what happens you can always find some hadith you see this is what's happening but you got these passages that sound like islam's going to keep expanding until it dominates the entire world muhammad saw a vision of that but no here islam is start off as something weird and then it's going to recede like a crawl back into its hole like a snake yes i hope it's that one i hope it's that one and not the conquering the world one but what's funny is islam shrivels up and they'll say you see muhammad said it yeah and he said like seven thousand other things you yes. just picked one. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, there is nothing more bizarre to me than the liberal feminist white Starbucks drinker who converts to Islam wearing a hijab like some fashion piece. Yeah, that is an ongoing issue, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, watch the, the most recent Chris Rock comedy special. Um, towards the end of that, he talks about people being addicted to attention, and yet there's only a few ways to get attention. And he's talking about what people are going to do because they want, they crave attention. And one of the things is like um, being a victim. If you can be a victim somehow, you get attention. But I mean, think about this. You're a Westerner. You're absolutely addicted to attention. You're programmed to do almost anything, no matter how ridiculous, for attention. And you know what I'm going to do? I've decided to convert to Islam. Well, that'll get you some quick attention. And then when you get the attention, oh, look, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And being a victim is one of the ways to get attention. So yeah, you are going to have this. Fortunately, fortunately, uh, that is not going to be enough to carry Islam through the avalanche of apostasy. I saw a video earlier by some uh, convert, a TikTok convert, uh, who converted to TikTok. Uh, and uh, she is saying, she's saying, guys, uh, I'm, I'm very, very sick of this. I get thousands of messages all the time, thousands of messages telling me, sister, cover up, sister, put a veil on your head. Guys, please stop. Please stop telling me this. <laughs> it's just one of many such cases. But it, I mean, it's very it's interesting because, again, we're, we're not, I'm not exaggerating when I say people are addicted to attention, right? Like your brain is, that's what your brain is feeding off of. You have an opportunity to get attention by taking some very simple uh, steps. You could just do something to get tons of attention and your brain craves it. It's like a drug. You convert to Islam. All of a sudden, there are a bunch of people flipping out, what, you converted to Islam? And a bunch of other people praising you, alhamdulillah, you converted to Islam. You get tons of instant, free attention. Then, even when you're doing something wrong, you're, do you're, you're, you're going around living like sneakers, they still, people complain about you. Guess what? That's attention. Like your own followers, they, 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 they criticize you. You're not following Islam properly. Guess what? That's attention. You're getting attention. Your brain is getting the attention it craves. So... Get used to it. You are going to keep seeing it again. It is not going to be enough to uh, to rescue Islam from the avalanche. By the way, when that hadith that we mentioned earlier says Islam started as something strange and will return to something strange, mm -hmm. not sure if it needs to be clarified. But when it says strange there, uh, what it means very likely or pretty sure is strange as in a stranger, you know, like unknown barely known so it started as something that was like barely known oh, unknown is going to return returned, into something unknown hmm. and it will return it to being something that is like a stranger 
it will crawl back into a hole like a snake islam is strange when you're a stranger faces look <laughs> ugly when you're a terrorist um <laughs> ap is only nice to christians so you won't eat a page of the god delusion wrong i'll eat a page <laughs> of the god delusion a heartbeat and then and then richard dawkins will be scared i'm only nice to christians so they don't eat me then he'll then uh, then dawkins will say i've changed my mind about uh, preferring to live in a christian nation I, <laughs> I that's a pretty a page good impression. of my book it's a pretty good Richard Dawkins impression. What's cool is we do completely different impressions and we do pretty, we, 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 we're we going to end up where we have like a collection of like 20 different impressions we can do between the two of us. Yes. Uh, I'm amazed by this man's love for his attacker. How would you react to someone trying to stab you? I'm honestly not sure I would react with love. Wow. Yeah, my first reaction would probably be just being honest here, the first thing I would do if someone is attacking me with that, and, and it, it depends on the situation. I know there are situations where I would put my hands up in the air and let someone murder me. It's going to depend on the situation. Some guy's running up to me, uh, hacking with a knife. I'm probably going to like smash his face in real quick, like uh, maybe gouge an eyeball out as we go to the ground to so he has something to permanently remember that situation. Afterwards, after the threat is cleared and no one is in danger. I would uh, do my best to respond the way uh, Bishop Marmari responded. Uh -huh. In other words, I would, I would, uh, I would uh, forgive the man because I've done horrible things too, uh, and I would try to change his mind and get him on the right path because I've I was never given, done anything. because I was given that opportunity. I've never done anything wrong in my life. Yeah. You're little goody two shoes, 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 little goody two shoes. Yes. David, I have a question. What do you think of replacement theology and how anti-Semite Christians like the West Bank pastor Tucker uh, had on point to it to condemn Jews? Um, I, I haven't really... I haven't really studied. I, I do ask people about it because um, you do have completely different perspectives, even among Christians. Um, and they can always they can always uh, there are passages that you can point to to argue your points in different ways and stuff like I asked uh, Michael Brown when he was on with me. I asked him uh, his view on, on that. But, yeah, I have not studied it in depth enough for me to make any comments on it. Every time you say Michael Brown, I think of Charlie Brown instead. And it's, it's probably very dumb. Uh, you guys are the newer version of Beavis and Butthead. God bless you both. Uh, that Is that rules. an insult? That rules. Uh, you guys should send your love to Ali Dawa and Pikachu. <laughs> we can't. do, guys. I mean, I mean, seriously, when you've got guys who believe because of their religion that they get to bang five-year-olds, six-year-olds and so on. And that they get I to feel spend, only love yeah, that when they I can, that. that they can spend. No, I want to say it straight up here. And these guys think that like their, their waking thoughts are, Oh, I can't wait for the time we get to wipe all these people out and kill all these people and slaughter all these people, behead all these people and kill all these Jews. And so when, when that's like their thinking, the best, most loving thing you can do is like destroy their ideology. That's the best. That's the, that is the most loving thing you can do for them. They'll whine and cry and moan and wail like babies the entire time. Oh, why are you persecuting us? You love us. Why, why would you do this? The most loving thing you can do is destroy their ideology. I would say the most exactly loving we're doing. thing you could do is uh, something else, but I'm not going to say it. Yeah, we're not talking about feeding Ali Dawa grapes just because he's a, a degenerate. <laughs> if you really love me, you come up and show here and, and, and dangle the grapes in my mouth while we slide here. Yeah? No. No. <laughs> Loving you does not mean doing whatever stupid, idiotic, insane, creepy thing pops into your head. All right? Loving you is destroying your stupid, fake prophet. Uh, list the order of a... What, were you going to say something? No. <laughs> okay. List the order of, of obnoxiousness. Muhammad the prophet, the apologist, the fighter. The fighter? Why the fighter? What's he talking about here? Uh, 
I don't know. Don't know. Uh, AP, what was your first video like? Oh, this is a person who keeps uh, bringing up YouTube questions. Uh, AP, what was your first video like? What quality and stuff you had then and now? Currently watching your first vid, certainly different from now. Uh, any suggestions? Why are you asking me what it was like when you're watching it right now? I don't understand. Um, it was very oh, you can literally find it if you search on my channel for the oldest video you can still find it right there it looks like garbage like trash uh and i literally recorded it with a trash can instead of a camera that's why it looks like that um i was sitting in front of a window and had a crappy webcam with, with which i recorded that's how i started and now i'm sitting here with a camera that is kind of a little bit disturbed and goes blurry occasionally uh but it's it's a pretty good camera it's a canon eos m50 mark ii and it has been quite good on, uh, until i dropped it in israel yeah uh so Tar tarun give you a quick crash course real quick quick cr oh by the way tarun i Go back and watch, if you get a chance, go back and watch the live stream we had with Matthew Mc, uh, no, uh, Matthew Middleberg. Because Matthew, that, McDonald's. Matthew Middleberg, we did that entire show on going through uh, stuff we learned about YouTube over the years. So that can actually help. Uh, you can get way cheaper stuff now. Again, you can, a phone, a uh, phone. Uh, a new an iphone right now gets better quality than the stuff we you know some of us were recording with back in the day i would get some sort of microphone uh good microphone help and when i say good microphone i just mean like something that's going to pick up good sweat you could get it you get a decent microphone that'll plug into your phone or a little camera or something like that in like a little lapel mic for like 15 bucks or something like that but uh sound is if you ever had to choose between sound quality and video quality, choose sound quality, you would think the opposite oh you've got to look good no uh, if you've ever watched a video where someone's voice is not coming in clearly that it's a deal breaker. Whereas, I mean, we just watched something from uh, Bishop Mar, uh, Mar, 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 Emmanuel, where he's not even on the screen, but we could hear his voice. And so it's totally, uh, totally fine. But uh, if you want some encouragement, Tarun, go back to Mr. Beast's early videos. They're the worst thing you've ever seen in your entire life. And understand <laughs> that this guy became one of the top YouTubers of all time. He kept at it. You can watch like his first 200 videos. He was really into YouTube. He's posting videos. They are the worst things in the history of humanity. Terrible, terrible, terrible videos, but he's someone who kept learning. So there's a, there's a good lesson there. Uh, Carol says, if only the Bakersfield City Council had supported the ceasefire, we wouldn't be in this mess. Yep. See, that's why that woman said, I, we will come for you and we will murder you. Yep. Yeah. And that's why she's got 18 <laughs> felony charges. <laughs> From Marmara to the Black Sea, Constantinople, Constantinople will be free. Inshallah, yep. one day. My tightings are so glad because of you guys. Good tightings. Oh, tightings of comfort. Uh, Hobo Cop says, how big is Sahil Bukhari? It has the funniest material every time you bring it up. Did we get some Quran verses while Muhammad was wearing Aisha's clothes? Yes, we did. Um, and so, uh, Sahil, Sahil Bakari is nine volumes in the English translation. In other words, if you were to buy it off Amazon, it's nine volumes that includes the English and Arabic. Uh, so it's not as big as it's not as big as it, it seems it's nine volumes. So it looks huge. It's not actually, uh, it's not actually terribly long. In fact, a bunch of lots of the stories repeat themselves. So there's actually, I think there's a two volume version that you can get that, that, cause sometimes you'll find the same Hadith five, six, seven times. Uh, in the source. So uh, there's a version that, that takes out the repetitions. In other words, it'll just give you a hadith and then give you all the references that, that included that hadith and so on. But that's like two volumes. So you can actually go through all of Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, hey, David, your testimony video was beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty dope. AP is included. And in what? What's he included in? Did someone else say something? AP is included. Oh, when it said uh, brothers in Christ or oh, something okay. like that. See? Ha ha. In your face. It doesn't matter. You're in there now. Mr. Noob said, what are your thoughts on the book that just came out by Adnan Rashid? I did not know that a book came out, so I can't have any thoughts on it. Abraham Fulfilled. Does he make any valid claims of Muhammad being in the Bible or is it just Babel? If he's talking about Muhammad being in the Bible and it's not as a false prophet, then it's just Babel. 
I'd be, I would be, ha I would, I would love, I would love to wreck. I would love to wreck some of that though. So thank you for um, informing me about that. Maybe we should have a look at that because yeah, we I'm break sorry. Some passages if, up. If, if you are going to argue that Muhammad is actually in the Bible, I'm sorry, but it, it's, it's so incredibly stupid. So incredibly stupid. And you, you could, you don't have to know much or study much <laughs> to begin to debunk and destroy this completely but i'm, I'm but I, i've gone through it so much and i'm sure david has even more and uh we, we could have a look at, at it we could have a field day with it it would be amazing let's, oh there it is look. abraham fulfilled a biblical study of god's plan for ishmael and arabia <sighs> awesome. oh my goodness oh look at this uh, it's abu zakaria adnan rashid and zakar hussein Quite the line up there. <laughs> Sucker insane, seriously. Quite the line up there. Um, um, that guy is yeah. an idiot. Yeah, this is going to be some bad stuff. This would be a situation where we might want to do like probably some some separate videos. And because guys, there's a there's a reason, right? You think, oh, why do you want to keep dealing with this stuff? There's a reason. Remember, I keep saying you got you just have to be relentless. You just you just have to keep coming. When they say scientific miracle, you just have to keep coming at it year after year after year after year after year until it drops. When they say perfect preservation, you just have to keep going at it. Seems like you're not making a difference. Seems like they're using the same stuff over and over again. You just have to keep going. And then eventually it collapses. Muhammad in the Bible is a big one because keep in mind, the you know scientific miracles, that's not what the Quran says. The Quran doesn't say Islam is proven by scientific miracles and so on. That's a, mod, that's a modern argument. Muhammad in the Bible, that goes all the way back to the Quran. And so for them to drop this one, that's huge. That's huge for them to drop that one. And so I wouldn't mind making some videos, maybe getting Michael Brown on it because he thinks these are ridiculous. He thinks these arguments are ridiculous because he knows the relevant languages and so on. And he knows uh, he knows the Hebrew scripture is better than all these guys put together uh, times a million. So, um, yep, I think we'll be, I think we'll do some videos on this stuff. Do some videos, some live streams. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. This book is has 450 pages what in the world did they write it at 450 pages about? i'll tell you what they just ridiculous they, topic. they know their followers are like oh if it's 400 and some pages it must contain brilliant stuff don't know what it is i just it must. i just downloaded it i'll have a look at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah what we could do is we could just pick an example go through it go through maybe we'll get michael brown on there pick a pick a good example like whatever their best one is or something like that go through it really really show how dumb this stuff is because uh -huh. trust me, it will be dumb. Yes. Um, <laughs> trust me, bro. Oh, hey, here's the proportionality, the proportionality reasoning. Israel, Israel, you took 500 shots at us. So in the spirit of proportionality, we get to take 500 shots at you. Although <laughs> we expect far more than 2% of our shots will connect, but that's on you, bro. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Fair is fair, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Stefan, thoughts of churches split during Council of Chalcedon and Ephesus? I want to call them my bros in Christ, but there's the nature of Christ. Yeah, I don't get it. Oh, I boy. I don't get into the disputes, bro. Oh, boy. One of the points is literally, like, we don't even have to go far. Uh, chapter two is about the passage, a prophet like Moses. And they're going to argue how, about how that is how that refers to Muhammad. Yes, <laughs> even though two verses later says Muhammad can't possibly be a prophet, but we'll leave that out. Mm, you see? <laughs> yeah, we might have some fun with that. Uh, and I guarantee you they're going to be getting real desperate. A Muslim guy stabbed a Hindu girl nine times today in India for the sole reason that she denied his love, a.k.a. love jihad. Yeah, those, those things happen pretty regularly. Uh, out there, India and Pakistan most frequently, but elsewhere as well. Are you kidding me? They actually they have they made a whole section forty pages long about. Don't tell me Song what? of Solomon. Don't tell me Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. Oh my goodness! How did I know? It's like <laughs> that's when they're going to have to beat to death. And so that's a situation where they just we'll put forty pages on it, and people will think that we have a brilliant case. Oh my God! These, these it's people. pathetic. This is the lowest form of human thinking. 
Uh, Michelle here says, I was ginger before I got alopecia. I think you mean alopecia there and got a torrid time as a kid, which is weird in Scotland as there's a load of us. Oh, that's funny. That's funny if they actually have a problem with gingers in Scotland where it's like a good chunk of the population. Because in Scotland, people's it's not just red hair. They've got red skin, too. <laughs> what? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Like, I've, I've never, uh, uh, I don't know. I've never, I've, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like, there, there'd be a kid with like lots of freckles or something like that. People that might talk about the freckles, but there's not like this. No one really has, no one has a serious problem with uh, redheads or anything. Yes, I, I have a serious problem with them. The Israeli Air Force and our entire people have yet to learn the poise and nobility of Christian forgiveness like Bishop Emmanuel. Our lesson will have to wait a little while longer. Am Yisrael, Kai, Zinibad, Iran. What are you laughing at? God bless America. <laughs> the comments, the chat, uh, the chat. Oh yeah. Um, that is that is a that is a that is a fun way of putting it. Yep. Yeah. Israel and Israel right now is in a position where it has to handle. Yeah. What and keep is keep in mind keep in mind both those things are completely are completely consistent with the Bible. Yeah. Right. You are taught yes. to love uh, everyone, even your enemies. You're taught to. Uh, you're taught to love and forgive people, to seek the best for people. Um, and yet we are told governments have, governments do not bear the sword in vain and they do have responsibilities and so on. So uh, your main responsibility, if you're the government of Israel, is protecting the people of Israel from a bunch of people who want to destroy it. As the good book says, there is a time for everything, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, and so on. Yeah. This Bible lesson brought to you by the apostate prophet, atheist. I'm hungry. Recent closet, <clears throat> recent closet atheist in Hindu family. Is it necessary to get baptized, or one can do that in the future when he's more independent? Uh, gonna depend. Gonna depend on the situation. Uh, immortal. Um, yeah, as a Christian, you are so. As a Christian, you are supposed to be baptized. Um, do you need to run right out and announce, you know, your conversion and so on? There are people who would say yes. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of: Do we want every new convert to run out and be in a dangerous situation? No, we would normally want people to grow for a while, to grow for a while before they're going to face, before they might be facing persecution. There are Christians who say, nope, as soon as you become a Christian, just go out and, and take on the world. And, and and if you get killed, then you get killed. And uh, if someone were to say they feel like, I am just, uh, you know, I'm Christian now, I'm going to run out and it uh, doesn't matter what the situation is, doesn't matter how many jihadis or anything else are out here, I'm going to run out. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would not stop them. But at the same time, I would not say that you are actually obligated as a brand new convert to run out and uh, and 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 face persecution. You you would generally want some. You would generally want people to to grow in Christ and and knowledge for, for at least a while before you face that kind of thing. Dennis Miller once when you, said, "When you say face persecution, I think of uh, someone's face being persecuted." That's because, because you, you have the mind of a donkey. <laughs> Dennis Miller once said that seventy-two virgins isn't that great of a deal. One or two is nice, but at some point you want a pro. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> Man. please add a disclaimer for Allah peace be upon him what would your disclaimer be for Allah I don't know I can't do it right now <laughs> uh, AP does Bukhari 5733 imply diarrhea is equal to martyrdom yes, yes. Uh, if you die from diarrhea you are, you're a martyr so it's good to know Yes, yes. It says the prophet said a Muslim who dies of an ab uh, abdominal disease is a martyr, and he who dies of a plague is a martyr. And uh, I, I also learned that if you die from uh, some some something like that, you are a, you are basically counted as a martyr. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's way easier than slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. So go yeah. with that. Go with that, jihadis. Just go get in. Go get a. Go get a. Some sort of stomach infection. Alhamdulillah. Her character. I wonder how the <laughs> Rabbi Shmuley, the guy who got Ky Candace Owen fired, would do in the same situation as Mar Mari. He didn't get Candace Owens fired. 
Yeah, I don't think he got Candace Owens fired either. I do think he would react very differently from Marmar. Yes. If he were in a similar he situation. He would have. He would have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is true. That is true. Uh, native Israel speaker here wanted to give my hot take about the previous live regarding God, uh, God's true name. Basically, there are two traditions for pronunciation, Yehovah and Yahava. Yahave? Yeah. I've never, I've never been terribly, ter- some people, um, there are disputes about how the divine name is to actually be pronounced. You have like scholars arguing, no, it's pronounced like this. No, it's pronounced like that. Um, yeah. For those of you who are interested, there you have some stuff. Love you both. Praying for your protection. Thank you. Uh, Sid Dave, according to Islam, Jesus will come back and partner with the Mahdi to fight the zombies trapped by Alexander the Great. All praise to Allah. I wish I could say you were exaggerating, <laughs> Sid Dave, but yeah. And finally, Israel is attacking Iran. Love you guys. Hey, how many times people got to say that thing? Like 20 people told us that. All right. All right. We finally got through the super chat. I, I told AP we were just going to come on here for a few, for a few, uh, like, like an hour or something like that and go through that clip. Um, but a ton of people showed up. I thought, you know, it's weird. I thought people were like, we'd already covered, we'd already covered this stuff. So I thought like, I just wanted to give people an update on anyone who's sharing, uh, who's, uh, because people are sharing these things that are claimed to be messages from the church or from the bishop and are actually from the church or from the bishop. So I wanted to keep people informed, but I didn't think, I thought like the interest had had faded and so on, but a ton of people showed up. So we ended up being on here a bit longer. Anyway, we're going to watch the ending here again, just for anyone who tuned in afterwards. So this was the, uh, where was it? This was the final takeaway. When yeah, I just checked again with the thing uh, with the pronunciation uh, with the with the name Yahweh, and uh, the most common, most popular uh, conclusion by scholars at the moment is that uh, is, is that it is it, it is most likely Yahweh Yahweh. So where the H is in the Yah is a very soft H. It's Yahweh. Okay, and ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, an atheist who did literally ten seconds of research. So, case closed. I made, I made two videos about this whole thing. It's all been settled. Oh, that is interesting that you're you're one. It's funny that you're an atheist doing this, but uh, it's also interesting that you're the you're the one who kind of makes this an argument. You're the, I mean, more more so than anyone else I can think of who makes it an argument yes. against Islam. Yes, I think uh, Christians should do that. Yes. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to watch uh, Bishop Marmari Emmanuel's words for his attacker and whoever was helping his attacker here at the end. Again, compare this to how a Dawa guy would be reacting right now. And we don't have to we don't have to imagine because we've had Dawa guy. We have had a Dawa guy who faked an attack against him. He wanted us to think this is what a, what happened to him. This is not what happened at all, but it did happen to Bishop Mar Mari. And where is Sheikh Uthman to condemn this? <laughs> I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. And I say to him, you're my son. I love you. And I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, I have nothing in my heart but love for everyone, whether that person is a Christian or not. Keep that in mind, everyone, when he, after he recovers and he is on podcasts all over the place and where he, keep in mind, you can have someone who hates Muslims and wants nothing but the worst for Muslims. But you have people like this who wants Muslims to to know the truth, to know the truth about Jesus. He has no ill will. He will expose Muhammad as a false prophet, not because he hates Muslims, but because he believes they've been led astray by a false prophet and he's trying to help them. The disturbing part is that lots of people in the Muslim community will respond to someone who loves them and wants nothing but the best for them, but criticizes Islam because Muhammad's a false prophet. They will treat that person as if he's exactly the same as someone who wants to kill all Muslims or something like that. They treat them as as if they're exactly the same. 
and need to stop that stuff and pay attention to what people's actual motives are. That's uh, totally beside the point. The Lord Jesus always taught us to love one another. Love God and love your neighbor like yourself. Whoever that neighbor is, we need to love them and respect them as we love and respect ourselves. So I have forgiven them. I'm praying for them. And for this young man, I say to you, you're my son and you'll always be in my praise. May the Lord Jesus forgive you. May the Lord Jesus bless you and show you the way, my dear, my dear son. And once again, to our beloved faithfuls, we need to reflect Christ in our life. So just guys, just keep in mind because we, we, you know, earlier we went through the entire thing. If you're here late, he, he started off and he's responding to, uh, he starts off by thanking Jesus earlier in the video. He's thanking Jesus. Um, he starts, and then his, and then his attention turns to Christians say, Hey, do not react violently over this. Then the message turns to his attacker says, I love you and forgive you. And then, um, and then turns back to two Christians, very different from what we get from the Dawah. The Lord Jesus never said, go out and fight in the street. Never said to retaliate, but to pray. And this is what I'm asking everyone to do. Pray, my beloved, thank the Lord Jesus, and respect the law of this country, and also adhere to the directives from our beloved uh, police force, from the commissioners, and to everyone else in this um, government. We need to be uh, law-abiding citizens. God bless you all, and uh, God willing, we will see you soon and uh, go back to our normal duties once again, serving the Lord from the heart. God bless. Take care. Oh, Enjoy. I'm going to love Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel going back to his regular duties Enjoy. of exposing Muhammad and preaching Do Jesus me. to Muslims around the world. That's super cool. Do super cool stuff. Uh, you, know what, you know what's going to hurt them more than anything? Hmm. What's going to hurt them even more than an angry response? Uh, a response that will be, they'll be like, you see, you see, you see. That's going to be like a, a peaceful and logical and calm retort and rebuking of the Islamic way. It's going to hurt yeah, them even more. I have to say, guys, the world is watching. The world just watched one of your young thugs go up and try to uh, try to murder a bishop. And they just watched that bishop responded. And you jihadis aren't looking very good by comparison right now. Looking, you're looking pretty. You're looking pretty evil and stupid and fake right now. That's how you're looking. We'll be watching. We'll be, we'll watch. be watching. We'll be watching. Uh, oh, there were a couple more super chats real quick. I just hopped in. I'll watch the VOD. Did y'all hit U.S. vetoing Palestine's bid at becoming a U.N. member? <laughs> that happened. Yes. Um, uh, the uh, U.S. There was a U.N. resolution to uh, admit uh, the Palestinian territories as a U.N. member state, and wait, the US wait, wait. Just... So that would that would make Hamas? No, 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 no. Um, under the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, so Fatah, Mahmoud Abbas, them not Hamas, uh, which is which is altogether a very funny thing because Hamas is not is not recognized as the leader of the Palestinian people, uh, yeah. but they are the ones fighting and they are the ones who are being supported by these idiots around the world. So um, the Palestinian Authority was supposed to be recognized as a UN member, and the US said, nope. A veto, and then the Palestinian nice. Authority made a made a thing on that, made an announcement saying, "This is unfair. This is yeah. unfair. Why would you do this to us?" Well, so yeah, to everyone who complains, just so you know, you have my full permission to cry me a river, <laughs> cry me a river from the river to the sea, cry me a river. Guys, I would, I would love, I would love to see the day. I would love to see the day where the people of, of Gaza and the West Bank live peacefully side by side with the people of Israel. We are not even close to that right now because people have been generations have been raised that no, your, your entire life's goal is to exterminate the people on the other side of that fence. Can't have can't have good things when you're when you're completely evil like that, ladies and gentlemen, can't. So change yourselves. Quit focusing on destroying Israel. Focus on changing yourselves and become 
the kind of people who are worthy of being members of the UN, which is has a pretty, that's a pretty low bar. Yeah. Membership in the UN. There are some total crap places that are UN members. I mean, like bottom of the yes. barrel type stuff. You guys aren't even, you guys haven't even reached the heights of being the bottom of the barrel. That's how bad you are. Fix Iran yourself. is a UN member, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. North Korea. Um, a wise man once said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yep. Wise man once said, mess around and you find out. Uh, hey, today is Khamenei's birthday, too. Well, happy birthday to oh, yeah. the Ayatollah. Hope you get what you deserve. Definitely got a uh, big bow <laughs> yeah. on some rockets. You know what's stupid dealing with these Muslim apologists? What? I'm, we're listening to the Bishop Mar 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 Emmanuel mm -hmm. saying uh, love one another. And the stupid thing is, as I am enjoying the wonderful attitude and thinking, wow, this is so good. I have intrusive thoughts of Muslim apologists because I hear that phrase, love one another. And what comes to mind is Muhammad Hijab saying, urinating upon one another. Urinating <laughs> upon one another. <laughs> Hey, you, you should just you should splice the, splice clips together of, of Dawah versus uh, <laughs> Christian evangelism. Love you, man. Urinating upon one another. That's what they do. <laughs> uh, should yes. songs of Solomon be renamed songs to Aisha by Muhammad? Well, no, because I mean that's a it, it, the actual book that's Solomon's wife. Solomon's wife lusting after her husband because he's so hot and muslims say that's actually about muhammad so she was actually getting a vision of muhammad and she's lusting out she's committing she's having adulterous thoughts about muhammad and she also says that uh that she belongs to her beloved and he's in love with her too so if that's about muhammad then muhammad was in love with a woman who'd been dead for uh 1500 years or so Mm-hmm. It's called necrophilia, ladies and gentlemen. He was in love with a, a woman who wasn't even a skeleton anymore. He was in love with her. That's yes. gross. I mean, that's that's. It's weird, you yes. know. I mean, and, and on the, I was about to say that's worse than the child bride, but no, I would I would prefer someone is in love with a skeleton than someone having sex with a living child bride. Yes. By the way, clarification on the on the on the news. Um, uh, Israeli military correspondent. Uh, just said that they have no information to share. Hmm. So this this comes up almost an hour after uh, both Iran and America announced that there is that a strike has been carried out. Israel military correspondent said uh, nothing to say. Hmm. So it I don't, I don't know what's happening, but Israel has not confirmed that they have actually conducted a strike. Yeah. That's However, why, there are that's why I don't like talking about it, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I got to say, probably know, we'll probably all know more tomorrow. Yep. If you were about to make a, if you were about to make a terrible mistake, the loving thing to do would be to warn you. D Wood and AP are the best friends those Dawa guys could have. Yes, we are. We are the greatest. See, all the Dawa guys, they just sit there and lie to each other and affirm each other's lies and delusions and violence and plans to slaughter everybody. Those aren't good friends. You need good friends that that correct you and try to set you on the right course. That's like us. It's like, a, for, and what's amazing is when we try to help them, they act like we're the most evil people in the world. G.K. Chesterton talked about something similar years ago, as far as like not telling people. And he said, it's, you know, telling people you shouldn't tell them when he's wrong is like saying you shouldn't warn your mother if she's about to fall off a cliff. You tell your mother's about to walk off a cliff. Oh, don't, don't, don't tell her she might, she might be offended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if thine enemy is, if I, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink for in doing so, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Alhamdulillah. And that's interesting because in Christianity, love can be your weapon. Mar Mari says, I forgive you. I will be back to my duties. Christian AP. Ha <laughs> ha. Duty. Atheist. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> You know what's funny is, er, 
Like I thought things like that as we're going through it, like AP would be like, oh, duty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sid Dave says Israel should challenge Palestinians to come up with a book better than the Quran. If they do, then Palestine Ooh. should be created from the river to the sea. Ooh, that's a good plan. That's, that's good. By the way, Sid Dave, that's a that's a that's the sort of challenge you should be putting out on social media. No, Israel should challenge Palestine to a fist fight. What's that? Uh, do you still talk with Iman from One Godless Woman? If so, how's she doing? She's talking to you. Who's AA? Is that you? I guess so. Um, I a -A? who is AA? I don't know. I mean, that seems Wrong. like apostate Aladdin. Was apostate Aladdin in here? You're AA. You're AP. You're not AA. No, no. This is to me because I oh. talked to, to to Iman from God, One Godless Woman several times. Uh, I am still in touch with her. I haven't chatted with her in a, in a while. Um, uh, she has been okay. She was dealing with some legal issues because somebody was. Uh, threatening to sue her over her online activities um but i think she's doing okay maybe maybe this is a good reminder to check on her and see if she's doing all right mm -hmm. thank you and why did muhammad ban his wives from marrying someone else after he dies i think he was worried if someone sleeps with his ex-wives they may have been seen as a prophet um yeah, we actually don't know. I mean, it could be something much. It could be something much simpler. Like he doesn't want to be compared with anyone else. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, like, like so, so you're with Aisha. He starts having sex with her when she's nine. He has sex with her till she's eighteen. What if Aisha married? She, Aisha would be a famous woman, and there would be there were there were guys lined up to marry Aisha after Muhammad's death. Just imagine she gets some hot strapping young lad and she walks around she's like ah finally not that shriveled up old creepy heaven's gate dude anymore now i got a real strong man it could be something as simple as that it could be something as simple as muhammad not wanting to be compared with other men in the minds of his wives who Let's face it, we're a bunch of blabbermouths, right? Do you do you want do you want your wives going around to their new husbands? Oh, you're so you're so much stronger and manlier than Muhammad was. Hey, you can satisfy me way better than Muhammad did. You want your wives going around saying that stuff in the Islamic community? No. How do you solve that? No one marries Muhammad's wives after him. So, apart from that, yeah, don't know. It's all speculation. Uh, and and watch D Wood streaming twice today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, all That's right, guys. Deep. Based, based, based. All right, sure. More stuff will be coming up with the uh, with everything that's going on. Um, but when are we going to be live? Well, at the at the latest. Hey, you Saturday, had right? you had four thousand viewers today. Was that the highest ever on my channel? You had like forty eight hundred or something on yours. At one yeah, point. I, I know. Yeah, I know. Of, of course, you can't. Yeah. Be on my channel, yeah, four thousand was I, a record. That was a record. I had four. I had four points. Uh, yeah, we know six, you're the you're oh, you're the best YouTuber ever. We get it. You don't have to brag. <laughs> you won, dude. I keep saying it. You you won. You don't need to spike the ball, man. <laughs> yes. Oh, anyway, point yeah. is, yeah, cool. Uh, it's cool. We have uh, tons of people watching our stuff because uh, of our awesome, super deep insights and so on. Oh, yes. hey, D Wood, Jake, Muslim Meta made a vid about you. Yeah, it's, I mean. That guy, uh, who Jake, the Muslim meta, whatever, uh, guy got popular for a minute and then like dropped back down. So now probably making another run. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know if I, if, I, I would have to be really, really bored to actually watch his video, let alone to respond to it. Cause there's much more pressing stuff, but yeah, I might, I might check that stuff out. That and, sounds like a very boring person. And um, Sid like Dave, I, of course, Mo cultivated a serious, brutal cult of personality during his lifetime. Islam is just a cult of personality. Eh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Remind me of 1930s Germany. AP, you definitely tis, know a lot about tis. that. Tis. That's my favorite time. <laughs> all right. We'll catch you all later. Uh, definitely be live again this weekend to cover some of the stuff that uh, people are bringing up now. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Your your reaction. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, and ju just a reminder to anyone who tuned in late: be sure to uh, find clips of uh, 
Uh, Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel, uh, share that stuff, share information. If you see people falsely uh, sharing stuff that does, it's not actually from the church. They said they have been having some problems with that. People saying, oh, this is the church is calling for this when the church isn't calling for that. So uh, try to keep your eyes on that. Uh, there are links to his church's YouTube channel and to their official website in the description box. So start following those so you can keep your, your eyes on things. And again, guys, we want this to be a massive, massive backfire for them. They're trying to silence someone. We want his voice to be massively increased and amplified because of this attack. And that will help everyone in the world and hopefully discourage some jihadis for making a similar similar blunder in the future. Hallelujah. All right. Catch y'all next time.